Ah, we're back with the Opie and Anthony show. The ONA virus spreading across America. So, uh, as far as the affiliates we're in, yeah. Boston 10 feels like minus 7. That's the coldest city this morning. The warmest city, West Palm Beach. What do they got? It's going to go up to 78 degrees today. Oh, that's nice. 78 degrees. God damn lucky bastard. In second place, San Francisco. Yeah. 58, a, a high. Mm. Rich Voss in studio, and uh, we were going to have him sit in the green room for like an hour and let the let the big boys do the heavy lifting, but you walked in with a uh, <laughs> with a uh, girl's purse or something. God, Rich you, walked God, in. I, I think he did that just to get airtime. I really do. It, it can't possibly be real. Rich walked in. You're walking in. around with that bag. He walked in. Let me set up the scene. He walks in here. During the commercial break, and starts talking about how he's in a hotel last night and stuff like that, and you know, yeah, you couldn't sleep, yeah, you know, for whatever reason. Uh, so I, I'm looking, and I notice on the other side of him, it's not even like a bag that if if I'm looking at one side of him and it's on his other shoulder that his body will cover it. It's a giant grandma pocketbook you are walking around with, and I saw it jetting out from like the front and the back. It's that big. First of all, it's not for airtime. I, you know, first of all, but for it, it's not for airtime. No, Rich, you said I brought be, it in to get. He's to, kidding. Like, uh, oh, okay, dude, you're, <laughs> look, look that's look a. You know what? That's a coach bag, and you know why I know it's, it's a coach a, bag? It's not coach. This is Louis Vuitton. And oh, Louis, Louis Vuitton. Louis Vuitton. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry you didn't. We didn't get this at the Gap, but let me. <laughs> I don't so shop in the Gap. Oh, whatever, Coles. I don't know. This thing, it carries a computer. It carries. My Dude, bag. it's a girl's bag. It's not a girl. It is a. It is, Holy it crap! It is a girl's it's bag. Rich, it is. You, you want? It's a girl's bag. You want to take a survey? We, we got the Pal Talk cameras. We got people all no, over the world looking at us through the show. Show the Pal Talk cameras your bag. You should. Uh, be there's not one person. I swear to God, Rich. It's so easy to beat you up and stuff. Yeah. And this we ride not, you pretty hard sometimes. Uh, There's not one person in our audience that's not going to say that's that's uh, not a girl's bag. There are computer bags that you yeah. can have that you can hold a laptop in, accessories, yeah. things, I and not those. one person would say, oh, my God, that is a woman's pocketbook you are holding. Yeah. It, it yeah, would look like a computer bag. Yeah, yeah if it was, if it was uh, black... Then maybe you could get away with it, but the cute little side saddle bags on the and side. And the LV girly logo, too. the Louis Vuitton pattern on there and everything. Yeah, this is the style, man. Style for what? Yeah, in the are village you? in San Francisco. You yeah. should be carrying tampons at that point. <laughs> no, he <laughs> is. Are you uh, coming out of the closet today? <laughs> no. What's, I know. Yeah, look, that's like a bag. That's a man's bag yeah, that could fit a laptop. You can get a bag like this anywhere for $10, $20. This is a, eight, almost a $2,000 bag. $2,000 no, $2, to 18, look no. like a no, homosexual. $1,800 bags. $1,800. No, $1, uh, hold on. Because we know Rich, too. What? You knock bought off. that. Yeah, it's a knockoff, no, and you bought it from a Nigerian no, on the on the, no, on the the sidewalk. You're, you're 100% wrong on this. You went into a store and first bought that, all, and they didn't Bobby laugh at you. bought this for me. For, don't, didn't you get my message when I went back into Louis Vuitton, and they didn't want to wait on me? Mm. I left you a message. They didn't want to wait on me. <laughs> Why didn't they want to wait on you? Because they're used to waiting on women. Because I brought all the homeless people into Louis Vuitton, and the Chinese guy goes, I remember you. Okay, I did get that message. So this is... An eighteen hundred. It's a real Louis Vuitton bag. This is the kind of stuff you walk through an airport with your computer, and people go, "Oh, oh, oh look oh. at this guy. He must be look going to San Francisco. He must be going to San Francisco." You know, right? it's so funny because you guys are sitting here. Dude, no, no offense, uh, but you you can't fight back on this one. Rich, that is that is so girly. Dude, the price funny. doesn't justify what it is or looks like. If it's eighteen hundred bucks, it, you you know. You could buy other women's clothing for eighteen hundred bucks. Rich, we've done a lot of traveling, a and the Vera last Wang year, dress uh -huh. will cost yeah. a lot of money. Yet you will not look manly in it. <laughs> we've done a lot of traveling in the last year. Not uh -huh. once did I see a guy carrying a bag like that. No, I don't know. I think it's even too faggy for gay guys. You should be swinging that at a larger man, calling him a masher. <laughs> <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I think you guys. Did Bonnie really yeah. buy that for you? Yeah. Wow. She she bought it for herself, you know. No. That was to emasculate you a little bit. No, I yeah, think I it's think. a nice I, I love it. No, I think it's one of those things where you buy something for someone knowing they're not really going to like it in the end. and then Oh, you and then the she'll present. get it? Yeah, she, she's 
She's got her eye on that. Leave bag. it to Voss. He's holding on to it. And she's at the hotel room going, Man, it's been a month. I can't believe he's still carrying that bag around. It should be mine by now. How embarrassing. If you, take, if you put this on Pal Talk, you ask, you could take Dude, the vote. No on offense. It. I, oh, I already have. Hold on. I can't read the word fag and queer fast enough. How much you want to bet? I have no problem betting you a but lot you know, of money. There's no way you get I and I'm not I'm not, we could we could do an independent poll. I don't care because yeah, the pal talkers they love beating you up. Yeah, and this, hey, you're you gonna lose, man. You can't go. You can't. Here's what you got to. Here's what we'll do. You can't go by guys that live at home or that are 16 or 17. You got to go by people That's not that our know that rich. Well, I know, but okay, of course your audience is gonna go gay. They're gonna go gay. But when you go, if you go into any store, or any fashion person, or you know what I'm saying. They'll go, yeah, that's a stylish type bag to carry. You know. How about this? Exactly, stylish type bag. How about this? What? You go to Starbucks right now. They're, they're lining up for their dumb coffee. We'll go down there with a cell phone, and we'll independently ask people online. At Starbucks? Yeah. I'll do that in a second. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you should be grabbing a towelette out of that bag and wiping a gentleman's belly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, who wrote the bag? That? Yeah. Uh, I'm not even gonna baloney drapes. <laughs> I'm not even gonna destroy it, man. I want to see you walking around with that. that. Dude, that is girly. You like this for real? I holy crap! I, I, no, it, it, like everything about it, I don't like. Even the let me let me feel like what it's made out of. It's leather, right? No, I don't know what it's it is. some kind of. Boss, even if that bag was completely it black, it still would look kind of girly. Plastic? Because it's got the side Vinyl. saddle like bags. I, I can't really explain it, but little little bags on the side. Someone says it looks like women's luggage. When more people get to Starbucks, I'll walk down there and I'll and I'll do a survey with anybody. And I, I guarantee. Are you going to be shocked when everyone goes, "No, that's a girl's bag"? If 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 more people say it's a girl's bag, then I'll go return and get something else there at the store. That's what I'll do. Guys but don't shop in that store to begin with. I know. I don't think they I've have a never, guy's bag in there. Never heard of guys going in there to shop. I, I really don't think. Unless out. there's a wallet, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Let me see the a wallet. Wa even even the wallet looks Whoa. a little <laughs> off. Yeah. Oh wow! <laughs> wow, rich. <laughs> the whole store is the woman's section. What do you put in there? Your hormone pills? <laughs> I don't have drugs. I don't have. I don't have. I have nothing. But every now and then, to spend a little money on something. I understand like. that, but. I, well, I, I got four sets. Of hey man, if you like it, that's all that matters. Looks like a diaper bag. People are saying. Uh, yeah, it does. It looks like a little like a diaper bag. That's the type of bag like a rich girl from like the Upper West Side would nah. carry around. It's an old Jewish lady's find. bag. Yeah. yeah. Oh. No. It is. I'm gonna go find out. That's. He what walked I'm... in here with his bag. He wanted to show it off. I rich wanted to show off his latest purchase. <laughs> <laughs> over your shoulder. <laughs> yeah, it was over his shoulder. He's can't, walking in. Can a guy get by with it? Rich, I know I'm tough on you some mornings. <laughs> yeah. I, I I will openly admit that. Yeah. But this one is so easy. It's it's not but even. But I funny. didn't bring it it's in. It's so going, easy. Hey, there's going to be trouble over. I got my sunglasses. And my. Uh, Why do you have to carry a computer around with you all the time? I don't have a computer now. Oh, I had clothes. No, no, no. You know what it really is? Where, where are you staying, by the way? I don't well, know in New York. Really close, right? Yeah, not. Too like, far. there's no reason for him to have that. Bag with him right now. Why do I he really... brought it in to show it off. No, yeah. no, you... and now yeah. he's really bummed out that we didn't, uh, that we weren't all. Ooh, wow! I, look I, at I that. I thought maybe you would have said, "Hey, that's a nice bag." No. They even did the runway oh. turn like they do on the. Like they're modeling. Yeah, <laughs> when they're modeling those bags. Jesus! Someone's asking if it came with a fanny pack. <laughs> Did no. you have to trade one bag for another? <laughs> <laughs> Which is like, can't can I get by with anything? You can, B I. But that's a stupid bag. <laughs> You're going down to Starbucks, seven o'clock. Yeah, I'll go down to Starbucks. You think there'll be people there at seven? Oh yeah. Yeah, it, this one's going to be really easy. How are we going to do it? Because I don't want to like you know bias any of the people. Yeah. Mm. It, it it won't matter. You can just go up and go. Uh, Do we send Steve down? I think we send two people. Voss doesn't say anything because he would word it in a way where people might say, yeah, it's a good bag. And then just ask, do you think this is uh, this bag is appropriate for a gentleman? So you said a male or female bag, so it doesn't. you can't go, is this a gay bag? No, you don't even have to give him a choice. Like, is this an appropriate bag for a man? And then you could say something like, 
Would you rather have this bag or a Mickey Mouse flying out of your sweatshirt? Oh, I got a Disney uh, sweatshirt. <laughs> okay. Is that what you'd rather have? It's a uh, seven-year-old. Oh, Rich is fighting do? back. Get two boys in your house in Missouri or something? <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. At least I couldn't fit them in that bag. <laughs> well, you could, no, I could. Flying but... all over the place. <laughs> this, uh... This kept me warm on the chilly uh, Florida evenings. Oh, really? Well, like I was you, strolling you through Epcot. Patrice, that would keep you warm, too. And well, now it's cold today, so I wore a Disney sweatshirt. Is there right. a problem? I, yeah, I think as far as <laughs> gay goes, I could I could have sex with Mickey Mouse, and it's not as gay as <laughs> carrying around that bag. You, that is just a woman's... Well, pocketbook. Okay. That is mommy's I, pocketbook. I bet it smells like mommy. baby powder and peppermints and like grandma's pocketbook. Now you're getting really upset about the Mickey Mouse thing. Relax. Hmm. Here's the thing. Okay, if I'm right, if more people say it's good Rich, for a male, you're delusional. what do I get out of it? I don't, I don't want anything, but you're delusional. maybe an apology or you were right. An apology? Time. You're no, delusional. Well, that's not going to happen here. You're, you are delusional. That you're you're delusional. No, people will look at that and, and think it's You're really going to be in shock when when people say that it's a, a girl's bag no i'm not you I'm really not. are you really believe that's a guy's bag yeah. let's uh let's say hi to uh ben in new york what's up ben hey <laughs> fun makes a lot of bags the ones with the lvs no question are for women they make men's bags but the lvs are for women the lv ones the ones with the logo are for women you guys know what we're talking about it's like brown with the lv logo everyone all knows over it. Louis okay Tom bag looks right, like right. this day dang and age first off half uh, your listeners can't spell lv first of all have you ever been to this uh, airport and seen some of the luggage men carry the lv luggage is that girls luggage i no, i've no, never i've never seen, seen a guy carry a uh, uh, LV luggage. We have been traveling like maniacs, and I've never seen the uh, baggage carousel and an LV bag come down and a guy go, this is mine. This is mine. <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> this is mine. <laughs> All right. I, I, maybe I'm wrong. I doubt it. I You're a first. Wrong. I wish I could say, you know, Rich, uh, d there was a guy I saw. There was only one other guy I saw with a, a Louis Vuitton bag. He doesn't exist. I've never, ever seen another man carrying one of those bags. I did. Andrew Kunanen when he shot Versace. The <laughs> yeah, yeah. only other guy that had a bag like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, well, we did that one. Uh, you look like you're perpetu you perpetually have your girlfriend or wife in a dressing room at uh, a store in a mall. You're just holding her bag. <laughs> it's like it's the only time a guy should be holding that is when his girl is in the dressing room and you have to stand there like the pee whipped ass you are and all just awkward. All yeah, uh -huh, hold it out with t uh, between your thumb and forefinger. It's not mine, but but you're you're proud of that and whatever. Uh, Eighteen hundred bucks. I don't know. I just spent my money a little differently. Why? Well, it was a Christmas. Well, actually, yeah, was, she spent thirteen hundred on a Christmas present. She got me a a, a different Louis Vuitton. Uh, oh my God! Uh, uh, what do you call a computer bag? A different computer bag. Yeah. But my computer didn't fit it, so I returned that, and I got this, and I had to throw in five hundred <laughs> of my money. I took thirteen hundred. So, and now he's taking full credit for the eighteen hundred. You're I'm lost. Tell her to give me five hundred. Rich back. is lost. Yeah, why did, you're a lost soul. Why don't you just tell her like ah, this kind of stinks? I'd rather get something else. Are you I, keeping I, I it because it was Bonnie's gift and and oh, you know the no. exchange thing and this? It's like yeah, it's not quite what I want, but but it's, it's great and everything. No, because I don't exchange stuff. I just give them to Norton for birthday presents. But here's the thing. <laughs> I like Louis Vuitton stuff. I mean, not a lot of it because it's too flashy and stuff. Too flash. That thing is the ultimate in flash. Like Louis, but you're showing off the fact that it's a Louis Vuitton. And it's a woman's bag, which makes it even more obvious. Listen, I, listen, I don't know. I, I walk through airports. People still recognize me. Some do. And I go, oh, that's that guy from TV or from O&A oh, or for Tough Crowd. That's look, that guy from well. TV. Looks like he came out of the closet. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Uh, no, that's, that's, I, that's I, that I better guy. call Star Magazine. I got a scoop. What they say is it, there's that guy. He has the same accessories as a TV. <laughs> 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 All right, Rich, you're going to Starbucks. Right. Could you look that up? What? Is there a Louis Vuitton site? 
Look that friggin' bag up and see if it says woman's bag or if there's any female attachment. Women's apparel. Women, yeah, what I section it's, it's in. I bet you it's under the women's apparel section. It's got to be. Is it a relatively new bag? By the way, for the rest of the country, so you you two could laugh, we're going to get that picture up on opianathy.com oh, very, yeah. very soon. Uh, we got Rich modeling his new bag that he's proud of. Modeling on the catwalk. On the catwalk. <laughs> <laughs> like Project uh... All right, listen. Project Gay? <laughs> All right, listen. He's getting the website. We're getting the picture up on uh, dot com. Rich is going down to Starbucks. So <laughs> That's get... the inside. Huh? Uh, Voss, uh, Voss's uh... photos are up, so let the people check them out for a couple minutes. In the meantime, just a quick update. Uh... <laughs> A Sacramento, uh, a Sacramento radio station fired, fired ten employees Tuesday, including its three morning disc jockeys. After a mother of three died following an on-air water drinking contest last week at the station's studios. Oops. We've been following this studio, uh, following this story since it happened. It was a, uh, it, it was a hacky radio contest where they brought people in and and they had to hold their Wii to win a Wii. A Wii. W-I-I. Right. And this woman, uh, she, she came in second place, went home, had problems, and, and died. Died. From uh, too much water. Preliminary results. Uh, the autopsy isn't in yet, but the uh, medical examiner said it was um, water intoxication. Yeah. Wow. So she yeah, she sat there. They said she drank something like two gallons of water in a very short period of time, relatively anyway, and um, uh, dropped dead. And we said fired, so fired. So completely fired. This, this is what so fired means. It means everyone gets fired. The heads came off. This was uh, one of those deals where they said there was going to be an internal investigation. They were suspended indefinitely, which they said that. And you know they were telling them all the things we've heard. We'll get you back on the air. We just kind of have to sort out. You know exactly what happened for legal reasons, blah, 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 blah. You go in to meet with lawyers and other upper echelon of the company, and you tell them who else was involved. Uh, salespeople, uh, program directors. Marketing. Uh, marketing. Any other management people or on-air people that were involved in this. Whatever Behind sales the person your show, producers, got, the, got the Wii right. for the contest. The, exactly. And then uh, they round all those people up. Have them dig their own grave, put the gun to the back of their head, and fire the and trigger. And blam up. And pull the trigger, and that's it. Done. We had no doubt they were going to get fired, but uh, it's pretty amazing. Ten. It's pretty amazing how many people they fired. This is ten people were fired. Is that a record for radio stunt gone wrong firing? How many people did we have fired? One. Well. Two. <laughs> well. Three. Rick, Ben, five. <laughs> okay. Stinky six? Yeah. Yeah. Six. Um, Mark. Uh, General wait, Manager, wait, wait, PD. Seven, seven eight, eight. At least eight. Eight people. They might have the record. Steve didn't get fired. No, because no, he wasn't working for the show yeah. officially. Wow. Eight. So they break the record with ten. Ten people. Ten people, yeah. The host of uh, The Morning Rave, who go by the, the on-air names Trish... Maney and Lucas were fired a day after the station announced it was uh, suspending the show and investigating the circumstances surrounding the death of Jennifer Lee Strange. Mm. John Geary, vice president and general manager of KDND, made the announcement Tuesday in an email to reporters. Mm. Effectively, immediately, the morning raid program is canceled and 10 employees are no longer with the station. You want to list all the people that got fired here at? A company spokesman, uh, Charles Sipkins, confirmed the three DJs as well as two other on-air personalities, Carter and Fester. <laughs> Carter, not, not Carter and Fester. That's what I said. How could you fire Carter and Fester? No <laughs> one's heard of them. Who the hell <laughs> is Carter and Fester? I got to get to the bottom of this. These friggin' news organizations never give enough info. Carter Why and Fester. was Carter and Fester fired? If there are other on-air personalities, are they part of the morning rave? Are they another show that was in? They, are they like uh, Ron and Fez would be to our show where if they were in also kind of early, having fun with a bit we were doing, and we killed a listener, they'd be fired too? They probably right. came in just to check it out and That's made a cool. couple comments. That's yeah, about made it. a couple fun comments. I'm part of the out. fan club of Carter and Fester. Carter and Fester. Not fired like this. Da -da -da -da. <laughs> <laughs> Carter and Fester. Not Carter and Fester. That's the most disappointing part of the story I've heard. 
Uh, five other employees who worked for in, on the morning raid were also let go. All ten were fired. A spokesman said for violating terms of their employment employee agreements. <laughs> I've read a lot of contracts. Is radio there a dead clause in our in my day? In our contract, there is nothing that says you can't kill a listener. <laughs> I, there's nothing that says you should. But I haven't read one thing that says you can't kill a listener with uh, with a stunt. Yeah. Well. Hmm. Um, let's see. The morning rave. Uh, been on the air about five years. Was one of the uh, capital's uh, top ranked morning drive programs. That's the most tragic part of this whole story. Read about the B comic with the big lips that was in studio that day. <laughs> oh, okay. It's a, it's a Mercurio joke, I gather. Holy Floss, why'd you whisper it into the mic? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Floss is not smart. I can't stress to the new listeners how dumb Rich Voss is. I just can't stress to you, you like this. <laughs> Don't tell anyone what I just said. Like, people at home can't hear that. <laughs> Next time you do it, pull your ventriloquist dummy out of your bag and use him. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> friggin' bag. You it's like... it's madam. <laughs> <laughs> Just whisper secrets into the mic. Hey, Jim, this is Rich Voss. I know you're the only one that knows I'm gay. No, no, it's... Keep it between us, all right? It's a whisper into a microphone going out to millions. <laughs> Since I'm only looking at you, you're the only one who can hear it. <laughs> Oh, you dolt. That's great. <laughs> Whispered. Paul. Oh, Paul. <laughs> hey, someone's bringing up a good point. Uh, no, maybe Carter and Fester just sucked, and it was a great excuse to get rid of another To show. get rid of them? Yeah. Where, where, I, I've never heard of Carter and Fester. Even during this whole story, we've been to the Morning Raves website. Do you remember seeing Carter and Fester as, like, characters? No. Nothing. I'm obsessed with Carter I and Fester now. I need to find out about Carter and Fester. Give us some uh, info on Carter and Fester. We need intel immediately. All right. I uh, want to know, know why they were fired. Yeah, also. definitely. Definitely. But it was very obvious that everyone was going to get fired. Sorry, Jimmy. Yeah, that Are investigation took a day. Have died from that much water? Huh? Oh, yeah. Sure. Anybody, yeah. From Usually water? fraternity guys, yeah. Brad Hazings. Yeah. Yeah. It's was... very rare. And, and marathon runners sometimes... Yep. Drinking too much water. I was so dumb. I'm like, nah, because they won't, they won't. You know, I, I was so stupid. And they were like, no, nah, they're done. And they were. I was. Oh, brought up the long. best uh, reason too. It's because you're thinking, well, they killed somebody, and then you think, well, they probably feel bad about it. I mean, you know, to fire them. You know, I'm not. Sure, I'm, I'm sure they weren't on the air, like laughing about it. Well, they weren't on the air. But Ope said, uh, it, how do you then go on when you finally get back on the air? And continue doing your, you know, Wednesday uh, promotion. What was their Wednesday thing? I don't know. Looney Tunes Tuesday. All one that of those, hack yeah. radio crap. How do you possibly go back on the air and go back into that two guys in a whole radio show? Right. How you doing, everybody? Beautiful morning here in Sacramento. We killed somebody. Oh my God! <laughs> you know, that's that's like that's all you can do. It's a great morning to kill somebody. Ah. Oh, I feel bad for this stupid show, man. You don't mean to do that, and then you're fired. You absolutely don't mean to do it. You're fired. Yeah, you're fired, Imagine and now the you phone sit call. there. They're in their office thinking they're proud of themselves. They finally did some kind of great benchmark bit. The, oh. the city's talking, and or all of a sudden they get that, that first phone call. Oh, we might have a problem. What there you could be a pro Oh, no, that's right. Yeah, because I, I, I was just thinking, of like, all right, and the contest is over. She's dead. They know. But the whole chain of events that happen yeah. you, you're home you're like yeah it was a good show man we did the water drinking show and then the the phone rings and then yeah what's up yeah um we got a big problem <laughs> you're like big what's an i we we couldn't get the we we don't tell me we can't get the we to give to the winner no you, you remember the girl that was in pain and had to lay <laughs> down on the ground uh during the show yeah. Yeah, that uh, made for some great radio her with her uh, screaming. Strange she was stuff. cramping up and stuff. Yeah, we had some real funny remarks. Carter and Fester were laughing their asses <laughs> over there, whoever the hell they are. Yeah. She um, died. <laughs> what do you mean? I mean, what I said, there's no, like, figuratively speaking. She's dead. She's dead. The, the, the girl, the woman that was in there for the contest is dead. You might want to turn on the news. It's all over the news. Is there just yeah? Is there all of the news? Is there just all out bawling? 
All right, look, is there any way we could pin this on Carter and Fester <laughs> and we can walk? I'll, I'll turn states on Carter and Fester. <laughs> Carter and Fester, I love them. Yeah. Well, Hire them immediately. Let's find out about Carter and Fester. We'll, we'll let you know about Carter Poor and Fester. Poor innocent bastards. E-Rock can't find any uh, info on Carter and Fester. Is the website completely different? Oh, God. You oh, they've radio. already... See, I, you know... Pop it up on that uh, monitor up there. Most people know, the faithful Please. listeners know, that Anthony and I are experts at this type of thing. Oh, we've been New through the New listeners maybe don't know. We've been fired twice for some high-profile things. And as soon as you get We're fired... Like, me and Ope are like Barnes and Elias. And everyone else is just a newbie waiting for a body bag. We know it. We've seen it. Just shut up about it. Yeah. There's only two DJs listed. Oh, no. And weekends. That's it. <laughs> I looked at their webpage. You used to have a huge picture of their, their morning show. They were the so morning proud. rave. Now they just don't exist anymore. They flushed them all out. Stalinism <laughs> at its best, radio. They oh. never existed. God, they're... No, comrade. That show was never here. Well, do you... Their station slogan is perfect, though. 107.9, the end. The end. You listen to this show, it's the end of your life. The end of the contestants. The end of the road. The end of the show. The end of Carter and Festa, whoever the hell they are. I mean, not to be selfish, yeah. but I mean, there is an open morning slot. Yeah, hey, Bob Eatman, get on the phone. Oh, my God. Keep the page right there. Yeah, so when you get fired, the website completely gets hosed down, and they make believe you never existed. You never, and never and lived. And it's business like usual, by the way. And this is how stupid they still are in Sacramento at 107.9 in the end. They got the last uh, 10 songs played on the station because there's a lot of music. You see what number one is? Before I get to number one, though, uh, number 10, Undefined. Oh, no. Nine, a song called Yeah. Number eight is Bad Day. Yeah. This is very telling, the, the, the last ten songs played. Number eight is Bad Day. Number seven is My Love. Uh, number oh. six, last ten songs played, it ends tonight <laughs> by the All-American Rejects. Dude, it gets way better. Number five, Don't Funk With My Heart. Number four, I swear <laughs> to right. God, Showstopper. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that it was. By, uh, what, Danny, uh, what is it? Carter and Fester. <laughs> Kane. Can't get enough of them. Number three, Wait a Minute by the Pussycat <laughs> Dolls. Last ten songs played, number two, Fighter by Christina Aguilera. And the last song played on 107.9 The End, a song called How to Save a Life by the Fray. Wow. Yeah. About dead woman over troubled water. <laughs> Can you believe that? It's right on their website. Oh. You might want to like maybe save a life. Maybe, maybe take that one off the playlist. Yeah, maybe for a take while. that out of uh, heavy rotation for a little while. You know why? Because it's all computerized anyway. We, we know how this stuff works. Yeah, they don't program music by a program director sitting there going through tunes. It's it's all done. They throw them all all the songs into a computer and it spits it out in a certain order. And uh, that shows it right there. Where's Drowning Pool? <laughs> Put some Drowning Pool yeah, in there. Yeah, there you go. Wow. <laughs> All right, here we here we go. Uh, we're sending you down to Starbucks. We're what gonna food, we're gonna yeah. talk to Rich Voss from a Starbucks mm -hmm. after the break. Uh, we're gonna get some comments about your fag bag. Mm-hmm. That's nice. <laughs> little gold zippers on the little. What do you put in the little end compartments? Because there's so much room in the middle. Why would you need the little end compartments? You know what that's for? Makeup. Makeup goes there. And then on the other side, you know how girls like to compartmentalize yeah. their, their goodies and things? That's why there's so many little nooks and crannies in their purses and zip-up compartments That and compartment stuff. is for your little cute cell phone, maybe like a, like a, a, like a cherry red type cell phone. Right. And maybe some lip gloss. And then you got to have, like, like Jimmy brought up before, tampons have to be put in there somewhere. You know... Listen to me, even let's even condoms listen. if you're a whore. <laughs> Are you a whore, Rich? <laughs> High class prostitute bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, what That's what it is. His blonde wig. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Daddy. All right, we really got to take a break. Yeah. We're having a lot of fun, but yeah. what do you got there, Stan? Anything good? Yeah, Tim just gave us some Carter and Fester. What their involvement? Oh, oh, nice. oh, oh! They turned on the spigot. 
<laughs> oh. You have an update on Voss's... All right, we got so much going on. We got an update. All right, why don't you do that fast? Iraq, you right. have an update on Voss's bag. We went to the website. His bag is not on the website, but the pattern and style is listed under women's city bags and briefcases. All right, no, women's no, 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 city no, no, bags and briefcases. Women's. Jesus. Where is it? Screw I think he's wrong. How could he be wrong? They all look like your bag without yeah, the side do. saddle things. Yeah, it's very Scroll close down. to your bag. The side saddle things make him even more womanly. Yes. That's it's a chick's hey, bag. Listen, it's a chick's bag, bag, Rich. We're gonna find out at Starbucks, all right? Let me, let me see it, Rich. Can you bring it over here, please? Thank you. And uh and what do you got on Carter and Fester, Ann? Because we gotta take a break. We're late here. Uh it just says um personalities Carter and Fester came in and out of the room pumping up the participants. Uh, and they would, what they would do is, uh, we did it like uh, they were drinking shots. Instead of saying cheers, we would say we, and then shoot down the water. Ew. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, oh Fester, God, they, don't, they don't even know how to kill a listener, right? Fester, <laughs> I know. They're even hacky when it comes hacky. to murder. Fester went outside and sprayed the window with water and turned on a faucet to tempt contestants to use the bathroom. So why is he fired for that? That was helping the contestants along. Dude. Any involvement in this. If you were in the building, you got thrown out, apparently. Poor Carter and Fester. They weren't doing anything. We got to start a website. Save Carter and Fester. Save Carter and Fester, whoever they are. They're uh, collateral damage is what it comes down Any to. Any pics of them? Yeah, here you go. He's got one of those big uh, goatees that... Uh, oh, okay. ...without the mustache. The radio. He looks like a radio guy. All right. He looks like Rock. Oh, dude. Oh, my God. Dude, that's Fester. All right, listen, listen. Poor Fester. We could easily keep going, but uh, we're going to get in, in serious uh, trouble, and we're going to be really late. So when we get back, we'll be talking to Rich Voss from Starbucks. All right. Oh, and don't forget, sometime this morning, this... Nothing you have ever seen before Fantastic. and nothing you have ever heard before will prepare you for the shock of <laughs> My Baby is Black. And it's in Rich Voss's bag. Now, the motion picture screen reaches its full maturity in this dramatic, bold story never before told on the screen. There you go. My Baby is the presidential candidate. <laughs> wow. It's the Opie and Anthony show. Yeah. How to save a life. Oh. How do we save Carter and Fester? We're obsessed with Carter and Fester this morning. Carter and Fester were also let go. You're checking out the Opie and Anthony show. The ONA virus spreading across America. Our phone number, one 866 free Now I'm not sure if I like my new chair. <laughs> See? Are you seeing the problem I had with it? I kind of like it. Initially, it feels like a good chair, and yeah. then it, uh, it it's crap. I've had that chair since we started working here, and it it pushes you off of the front of it. There's not enough room between the front of the chair where your legs hang over and the back where your, your back hits. And yes, all chairs are adjustable. I know. I've adjusted it completely out, but it's still, you, you slowly kind of fall off the front of it, and it it pulls, it gives you a wedgie. I've left the studio with my. <laughs> How do you say it? With a wedgie. With, with a wedgie. Both hands yanking with, back out. Yeah, and you, you gotta like, not even a wedgie like that. Like I've left in pain, like I had entered into some type of um, uh, sexual situation with a girl and not been able to uh, uh, finish the job, and then you you leave and you get. Uh, you know, something starts with blue and ends with everything everybody knows except you can't say. <laughs> Christ. <laughs> Stupid rules. Gotta keep it safe for the kids. Stupid effing rules. Don't worry, Al. We're keeping it safe for the kids. Yeah, Al. You didn't have to dump out, Al. <laughs> Ugh. But yeah. All safe and sound. Because you'll, you'll notice you will slowly start being pushed off of that chair. There's not enough room yeah. for uh, somebody to sit there. It's a chick chair. <laughs> really fast, because we got Rich Voss at Starbucks. Uh, yeah. We we change chairs in studio, and it turns out the chair Anthony hates, I love, and vice versa. And Jimmy's just looking at us like, holy crap. They're I'm switching not. chairs on the break. It's just crazy. Well, they had to bring in a new chair for me, even. Like, Opie offered me his chair. I was going to take that, and I looked at it like, yeah, that looks like it's got enough room. And then they wheeled in this wonderful <laughs> aircraft carrier-sized chair for me. This is a fine radio show, and I, I'm, I'm sure a lot of the listeners are... are 
they wonder, except for the pal talkers, because we do during the breaks, they're sitting there wondering, God, they must really work their asses off when the commercials are playing, trying to figure out what they're going to do next with yeah. their program. No, we're just talking about chairs. We need a better <laughs> chair. But you initially loved his old chair. You're like, ah, it's good for my back. It's nice and firm. And then 30 seconds later, I don't know if I like this chair. I don't like this chair. <laughs> oh, <laughs> fuss budget. <laughs> fuss we're, budget. We're out of our minds. We really are. Fuss budget. <laughs> Oh, 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 all right. So, uh, so getting wedgies and stuff. Uh, just yeah. a quick question, okay? And you got to be honest. All right. Have you ever had to leave your underwear behind because uh, you pretty much destroyed, destroyed it, them in the they course in, of my life? They were in, uh, they were in bad shape. Of course. They were uh, 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 unfixable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the course of I think every guy's life, there comes a time where you have to just completely jettison, jettison the underwear. Just leave them behind. <laughs> yeah, like I, oh. I, I've done it in a Starbucks bathroom. Oh, <laughs> and all of a sudden, like, oh boy, there's, there's a problem here. I gotta just, I just gotta jettison these things. Yeah, Jimmy's got. Uh -huh. yeah. Recently, yeah. actually, I no, no, no. Just, oh, really? Just, Recently? Yeah, it was just like I was carrying a pudding slingshot. <laughs> oh. <geez. laughs> <laughs> uh, I absolutely know what you're talking and about. Where That's, did you jettison it? Uh, it was uh, it was actually home. Oh, it, at that, home. I had that, that was kind of like you know the greatest is when you're like, oh, out? out. That's what I mean. You're I'm out and about. You got to I mean, do what you got to do, and all of a sudden you're like, oh boy, there's a problem here. I got to jettison these things. No, right no here. not out. There have been days like when when I used you to do actual and, manual labor, and I would go home. And and you know maybe it was a rough dit night the night before, uh, out drinking, and then uh, you have to use the bathroom during the day, and then back up into a hot attic, and oh. you know this is some nice insulation going on and everything else. Uh, it's just the re the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald <laughs> back there. They can write a song about it. <laughs> Our old, it was horrid. Our old pal uh, Crazy Jim told the greatest story as far as Jettison. Jettisoning your your uh, your underpants. He had to uh, get rid of his yeah. He yeah. Uh, let's just put it this way. He had to do what he had to do. Yeah. And then there was nothing to uh, uh, take. Uh, nothing to clean up with. Nothing after to clean you do, up after. Do yeah. that act. Right. So then he had to use. Uh, yes, he had to use that. And then he realized, well, uh, wow. So then he. He put his underpants in the drop ceiling of the bathroom he was in at the time. I think it was a McDonald's. A McDonald's uh, bathroom. In bathroom. The, in the drop ceiling. And he just opened up the drop ceiling and threw his filthy underwear up in, into was, the ceiling. It was so horrific. He didn't want to just leave them in the wastebasket. He said, man, I got to hide these things. I got to bury it. Because he had to use it. I got to bury this. I, I and to be uh, completely honest, again, I, I've never used my uh, underwear for that, mm -hmm. but I have used a sock. <laughs> I wow. I'd sacrifice the sock. You look like a really bad puppet act. <laughs> oh no! What are you doing to me? <laughs> <laughs> I stink. <laughs> I, I actually, by the way, yes, I did have to use them one time when I was younger. Me and my friend Paul were walking to steal uh, comic books one time. Of course. And I had like one of those like, oh my god, I can't walk. And we had to run into the woods real quick. I had to. And uh, as I was finishing up, there were yellow jackets circling <laughs> my legs. Because apparently I was by a beehive. And uh, I'll never forget like three yellow jackets whizzing in and out between my legs. Wow, and, that's scary. It was awful. And I had on, I, I, I had to, uh, I, so I had to leave my underwear there because there was nothing. I wasn't going to take chance that he it. leaves. Yeah. Hey, you gotta, yeah. Got to leave him awful. behind, man. Yep. <laughs> leave him behind. I was hoping he he was going to tell us he used the beehive to clean up <laughs> Ow. an old wasp oh. nest. All right, let's say hi to Steve. He's with Rich Voss. He's at uh, Starbucks downstairs. What's up, hi, Steve? Boys. Hey. Hey, guys. We're in the middle of Starbucks. Okay. Uh, Rich has convinced me to purchase the same bag. <laughs> and uh, as a matter of fact, there's a lot of people down here with various uh, styles of, of, of purses and bags and briefcases. So I'm hoping we'll get... Uh, a nice, mm. uh, an, a smattering of different views. Is Rich getting recognized? Uh, yeah, uh, a cop uh, uh, just walked in and said, uh, yeah, you're the guy with the mo bag." Oh, really? <laughs> the yeah. mo bag. It's good to know they're listening out there. All right, so how are we going to do this, Steve? You got a game right. plan? Yeah, I think so. Okay. We're live on the radio, and we're just asking uh, a couple questions 
about um, this bag that this gentleman is holding. Would you mind? Uh, would you mind talking to us for a few minutes? Okay. okay. Uh, if there was somebody in your family that you were going to buy that Louis Vuitton bag for, who would it be? That would probably be for my mother or sister-in-law. Of the female persuasion. A mother or sister-in-law of the female persuasion. Steve, you did not coach her, right? No, not at all. Okay, at all. let's move on. This is so Great. obvious. Make sure um, Rich we is don't just even need to do holding this, the bag. Right. Don't have him modeling it or wearing it. He's not modeling it. All right. He's not modeling it at all. All right, okay. move on, He's Steve. Holding it. So far, right. one... Yeah. She's We're a mother and sister-in-law. That's stress yeah. female. One says mother and sister-in-law and or... We're live on the radio. Would you mind uh, answering a few questions about... Quick, it's one, it's I, 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 All right. Okay, one guy not interested. Oh, uh, let's ask tell that douchebag. Douche Just lighten up and do it, no. you stupid goddamn... What is wrong with people? Everyone I'm so busy. Everyone thinks they're so important. Just do it. Throw burning coffee in his face. <laughs> uh, <laughs> with scalding right. cup on his neck. <laughs> <laughs> Do a little right. oopsie as you're, you know, getting the milk and the uh. sugar. All right, I think, uh, you there? Yes, yes Steve. Okay. Uh, I'm here with a gentleman now. Uh, sir, if you were going to buy this Louis Vuitton bag for somebody in your family, who would you buy it for? Uh, for my wife. For your wife. All right, yeah, see? I know my wife would love that bag. I mean, it wouldn't be for me, but it would definitely be for my wife. She would love that bag. Yeah, okay. There you have it. The wife would love it. Oh, thank you. All right, Wait, man. Rich don't now arguing. Hold on. Don't let Rich argue no, with anybody. Shut no. up. Yeah, because we don't want people to, to realize that it's his bag. Right. Uh, right. Exactly. Okay. All right. Keep All right. going. Okay. We'll do okay. two more. Yeah. Oh. Uh, forgot them. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay. And we're being ejected. I who? Starbucks. Uh, are For you what? kidding? For what? For what? Who's rejecting you? A manager. Reach. For know. what? <laughs> what are they saying? Uh, because we're we're being a nuisance, apparently. A wow, because no important things are getting done at Starbucks. Unbelievable. Oh, God, exactly. this country stinks on ice. No one wants to have fun anymore. No, they certainly what don't. What kind of was, nuisance could we be? You're online for a lousy cup of coffee. That's everyone, overpriced. Maybe they recognize Voss as having done stand-up. Just one question about this <laughs> bag. <laughs> All right. Guys, guys. All right. I got a, a, an, another uh, another woman. Okay. okay. We're, we're, we're live on the radio. We're asking you, if you were going to buy this Louis Vuitton bag for somebody in your family, who would it be for? My sister. Your sister? Your sister. Yeah. That's it? Very good. Very Thank good. Thank you very much. See? Um, uh, not one you. man. <laughs> That's it. Everybody would buy this this Louis Vuitton bag for a woman in their in their family. It's so obvious. This one is so obvious. Uh, you, ask, want, you want to talk to Rich? Yeah. He, he's now arguing his point. Hold on a second. All right, Rich. Here, Rich. Of course, they're all going to say women when he asked all women. They, they asked the guy. They asked the guy. He said he would buy it for his wife. His wife. You don't. Oh, you're right. Oh, yeah, okay. So they ask one guy and two guys. Ask this, miss, miss, do you like this? Oh, you creep. Uh, this isn't working out for me right now. No, yeah, work them on the street, Rich. Ask some people. I, I will ask people. If there's, here, comes, here comes a lady right here. All right, let's go. Excuse me, miss. See this bag right here? Would you buy this for a male or a female? You're sure. Okay, it's an answer. It's a yes or no, a male or a female bag. She only, she's looking at it. Okay, this lady. This lady has a mink. She has class. <laughs> Who would you buy this bag for, ma'am? A male or a female? This Louis Vuitton. Female. A female? Female. But a male couldn't have it? Like you did a, like a first... Don't, don't, Listen how... D d d he hit her with it. Yeah. Don't, don't, strike you for, that's a nice mink. That's a nice mink. All right, that's another female. You, you want to buy one of those too, Rich? <laughs> you want you just ask a little bit more jaded. Who would you buy this well, for, a female guy, or a, uh, a male? A male. Or a male, wink, wink, help me out. You know he's making his dumb bug eyes at her too, like, yeah. opening, like or a male. Yeah, come on. Or a male, right? Okay. Listen, I, this is how, this is what a man I am. When I'm wrong, I can admit I'm wrong. You're, I might be wrong. wrong in this situation. <laughs> the problem might be. The problem is you can't admit that you're gay. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear them. I think they're having humor on my behalf again. Humor on my behalf. <laughs> Not expense. Wait, hold on. Hey, hey, you guys. Would you guys? These are tough guys. Would you guys carry this Louis Vuitton bag to carry it? Would you guys carry this? No. 
No. It sounds like he's only... asking them to carry it for him. <laughs> run... would you, excuse me, would you guys carry this yes. for me? Through the airport security? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you can't ask a question. <laughs> There's a Spanish guy that looked at me in such disgust. Yeah, like, of course. I, I wouldn't carry that. This is not even before. close, Rich. What's that? This one's not even close. All right, I, hold on. Well, we're coming upstairs here. Oh. <laughs> you know, there's uh no, All right, there you go. He's coming back upstairs. Not one person no. No. said they would buy that for a guy in their family or, or friends or, or anything. It's all all women. All right, and the photos are up on opianthony.com. We're going to catch up a little bit. We'll continue. we got some idle talk. we got uh, My Baby is Black. we got to save Brad Pitt. we got to wish Muhammad Ali a very happy 65th birthday today. And Jason Isler had a problem in jail. And Jason Itzler, who called the show today, uh, yesterday. We, we couldn't get to him. We'll get into that story as well. It's the Opie and Anthony Show. We'll whip him out Wednesday. Let's give it the big plug here. Right. Get a wow on the vehicle. For detailed instructions on how to get your very own wow sticker, visit opianthony.com. Wow stands for whip him out Wednesday. We pretty much say at this point, whip him out whenever. It's going to be whip him out any time, but that's wow. It works great when you're stuck in traffic going to a sporting event. Wow. One of these days you'll be driving. Girl that's familiar with the program is going to see the wow, know what it means, pull up next to you, and flash you. It makes that commute so much better. So there you have it. Whip him out Wednesday. It's the Opie and Anthony Show. The Opie and Anthony Virus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, we're back with the Opie and Anthony Show. Who saw American Idol last night? A lot of people. A lot of people tend to watch that program. It's the goof portion of the... Uh, of the show, really? Yeah, where they uh, showcase all the people with no talent, pretty much. They show a few of the uh, good singers and let them through, but mostly focusing on the freak show aspect. Yeah. And they make believe they're not seeing freak shows, by the way. That's what I hate about the show. It's not really honest. Like, uh, those people are in there to be goofed on. Yeah. But the judges make believe, like, what? What? What are you doing here? How did this person slip through? They already know they're going to be uh, watching some really, really bad singers. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it's all about. And then they have the uh, this new gag, which I think is hilarious, is uh, where all the contestants, after they get beat up, mm -hmm. they're walking out and they're they're going through the left side of the, the two doors. Yeah, there's double doors. And then for some reason, they're keeping the left side locked and the right side open. Just so they can, like, beat them up just one more time on the way out. So when they leave, all dejected, they hit the door on the uh, the left door, and it's locked. And then they have to go, other door. Other door. Like, other door. Like, stupid, you can't even get that right. And the guy's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah you, I'll show you guys. <laughs> the American Idol just made the biggest mistake ever by not having me on. <laughs> I would have made the show the best ever. But you'll find, and then they they look into the camera and say stuff like, you know, you'll see, I'm going to make it without you. Where are those people? <laughs> <laughs> like from all the other seasons. They say that every year. Yep. Well, Linda Stassi, who Jimmy hates in general. With, with a passion. She's a uh, TV critic, I guess. Yeah. American tragedy, she writes in the uh, New York Post today. Just couldn't find anything that rhymed with idol. <laughs> idol opener. <laughs> yeah, really. Idol opener, a crying shame. Ah. What a disappointment. American Idol was, for the most part, sad and painful, and it was like laughing at the handicapped. What? That's why I found it hilarious last Ex night. Exactly. Uh, I filled One of our my favorite pastimes. <laughs> she writes, I, I filled my living room with my biggest idol fanatics, and we breathlessly anticipated oh. the return of everyone's favorite talent show. Oh, did oh. she have a little party? You know what a hen fest that must have been? Oh. <laughs> Checks party mix all over the place. Arms <laughs> and cheese and nibbling on it. Big what was that? You you what? went on mic. We I know. couldn't. I couldn't hear you. I did not hear you either. Was he was he whispering another secret? <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, I said a funny line. What'd you say? I said they, the fat lady. They were dipping arm and cheese and nibbling on it at the party. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, actually, that's pretty funny. <laughs> anyway, it gets better. So that's funny, damn you! <laughs> by the end of the night, there wasn't a dry eye or a happy face in the crowd. Good thing I had brownies. 
Ew. None of them have spouses. <laughs> oh, but is, God. That what, is that what cheers you up? A bunch of people are being rejected, and you shove a few brownies in your fat face, and all is well with the world? <laughs> Everything's yeah. fine. How superficial are you? Don't worry, people. <laughs> oh, brownies. I got brownies. <laughs> right. Don't worry. Bunch uh, of crying little hens. <laughs> oh, this is terrible. They're treating me. Ooh. Till my fat face. And then this is what she uh, she writes. Look, it's one thing to laugh at, yes, at, the talentless yet hopelessly arrogant. It's another thing to laugh at hopefuls who are just hopelessly sad. The show began with an endless cry fest from a girl named Jessica who was so bad and so sad and so hopeful that she was heartbreaking. Don't. Doesn't she understand the whole gist of the show from the beginning has been American people's fascination with watching other people's dreams be crushed to see that moment. We we enjoy that as a people. I don't know why. It's just human nature. And I find it hilarious to look at how clueless some of these people are. That they think they're talented and they're so bad that they can't even tell. Uh, and and you know, they, they have no clue how bad they are on it. because mommy told them how great they were their entire yeah. lives. My my thing, I, in a weird way, as much as I don't like her at all, I kind of I, I agree a little bit with the her. brownies. Yes, they are delicious. <laughs> and I got a bunch of my favorite friends over, and we all held Rich Voss bags and watched American <laughs> Island. <laughs> but my problem with the show... Your brownies walked in, though. Was, <laughs> threw them on my chest. My problem with the show was always like, I was like, eh, they're kind of attacking weak targets. Like, I, it's Simon, I kind of do like them. I think he's funny. But I was always like, they're, they're like, like, they're not doing it with guys in Compton. Like, like they're, they're always just attacking these soft, weak people who are just really depressed. And not the, the arrogant ones are one thing, but the ones that are sad, I actually feel bad for them. I Faggot, think right? that's who's uh, showing up, though, it, are people that actually have talent and then these retarded people. They really are the retarded. And it's yeah. a program that lets us laugh at the retarded. I love it. But Jimmy makes a great point. It's not like, you know, it's young uh, rap hopefuls. Uh, Simon wouldn't be as brave. And there's another thing I noticed. There's obviously a lot of security guys off off camera right to their right. Because I see them yeah. look over to the right every once in a while. Because I'm wondering why no one has really went after them Just physically. Lunged well, at after it. some of the stuff that are said, I'm like, wow, they really show a lot of restraint. I would be, I would be in their faces. But it, there's obviously some, uh, some, some muscle right to the right protecting yeah. uh, Paula and Randy and Simon. Well, uh, rap people don't show. They show. Yeah, rap late. people. They're not going to get down time anyhow. So. <laughs> And then and Tom was the audition. And then Linda continues. Damn, that's early. The show began. Oh, uh, we did that part. Uh, the rest of the night was just as sad with contestants breaking down in real tears of despair. Hello? That's entertainment? Why did she write hello? Yeah. Or oh, was that you saying that? Hello with a big <laughs> exclamation point. Hello? Hello? That's entertainment? I hate the hello. Why not take us to the real dog pound and watch the dogs get ready for a euthanasia? All right. That would be a great show. Let's go to the little shelter <laughs> right in uh, East Northport. Let's find Marge. <laughs> Where's Marge? And then she writes, I'm surprised a blind nun didn't show up to sing Over the Rainbow. What? Whatever. What does really that supposed to mean? Well, she was, well the, the line before that was uh, that the mil the people, I mean, they showed up in their uniforms, all the military people that showed up in Oh, whatever. right, gotcha, yeah. She yeah. was saying that it was kind of manipulative, but... Uh, I think it is a little bit on the contestants' part. I don't think the show or, or the staff has anything to do with that, but I think when somebody comes in and they're in the military and they're dressed in uniform, they're trying to garner some sympathy from the American people, sure. that they're uh, soldiers. That one guy that was uh, from the aircraft carrier, uh, Ronald Reagan. Yeah, it, he was bald, and it wasn't even like like who was the guy last year, the rocker guy, uh, Chris Daughtry. Yeah, Chris Daughtry, where he shaved his head to look like the guy from Live. This guy like had the horseshoe ring baldness, <laughs> right? And he's supposed to be an American Idol. <laughs> now they're going with the sob story. Like the guy crazy. had the Murray Slaughter <laughs> cut. <laughs> Your hair looks great, Murr. <laughs> You're gonna be an American Idol, okay, Murr? We're behind you all the way, Murr. Lou, vote Lou. <laughs> vote for Murr. <laughs> He's just got the skinhead and the horseshoe hair, right. and he's up there, you know, singing, <laughs> belting it out. 
You yeah, that's a great it. look if you're a plumber, but yeah, not exactly. if you're an American right. Idol. For American Idol. Right. The words Murray Slaughter will always make me laugh. <laughs> oh, <I know. laughs> no. Murray Slaughter. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think? <laughs> uh, We're all behind you, Murr. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> They're coming with sob stories now. The one girl, I'm, I was a crack baby. Yeah, yeah. They all have their that. stories. And she looks like she's on crack herself. Yeah. She's, she's 16, but she looks like she's 30 already. She looked a mess. Yeah, she's 16. And you looked and went, wow, that crack baby stuff. Oof. Yeah, that'll, that'll damage you Eek. a little bit. That'll damage the DNA. You want to talk about depression from the show. I played golf with Brian Dunkelman, who was the co-host from the first season that quit. <laughs> that quit the first I thought they the, fired him. He said he quit, but all I know is oh, he, I'm fired paying him. for his golf, and the guy's in a beaten down, <laughs> broken Mercedes in L.A. Wait, what's the story? I don't know. Yeah, how like, he, was he one of three or was there four? No, he was the co-host with Ryan Seacrest. Yeah, there was Ryan Seacrest and then this other guy. Yeah, Brian Duckelman. I play golf with him. And you know the guy. Yeah, I play golf yeah. And, and you you're saying he now? quit the show. He, he did yet. not He's, quit that show. Yeah, Would you have a threesome push. with Pete Best also? <laughs> <laughs> is he, was he <laughs> teeing off behind you? <laughs> what happened is he thought... You know, he wanted to do his comedy lines, and you know they would write him lines, oh, no. and he, no, no, he no. said they're not funny enough, and he would want to do it, and he didn't get along with anybody, and he goes, he said he, <laughs> well, he did you, uh, not quit how do you American Idol. The American now, Idol now I think he's doing Jeopardy in Atlantic City, like a live Jeopardy. Show. That's how you say face. You get to tell your friends, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I quit. I walked show, away from man. that. I, I have dignity. I'm not yeah, going to uh, kowtow to a show. Fired. Like, oh my he God, was, I was fired. I was fired. The biggest show in history. What's his right. name? Brian Dunkelman. Exactly. Maybe they fired him because there's a name like Ryan Seacrest and Brian Dunkelman. It's Dunkelman. It's not a name. It Dunkelman. Flow, it doesn't flow off the tongue. American not. Idol with Brian Dunkelman. <laughs> Change that name. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Ryan Seacrest. Hollywood type name. Yes. And Dunkelman. <laughs> I believe the Dunkelmans are coming over tonight. <laughs> are they coming tonight, the Dunkelmans? We always invite the Dunkelmans and they never show. <laughs> Oy vey. Uh, Dunkelman. That's an uncomfortable name. Ryan Seacrest and Fred Clot. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that might be. That should be his first step. Change the name. <laughs> Just change the name. You want to? You want to hear Jessica perform? Dunkelman it? party. You're ready to tee off the Dunkelmans. Dunkelman. <laughs> Why are you attacking me for his name? I don't know. You're friends with him. Yeah. There are two types of people that watch American Idol. Like when when someone like uh, Jessica starts breaking down and crying because her dream is crushed. Yep. I just. I can't control myself. Belly laugh, laughing, <laughs> laughing my ass off. I think it's some of the some of the greatest TV you could ever watch. It's it's somebody's dreams being crushed, but it's also the fact that they were so confident that that wasn't going to happen. Yeah, it's it's watching somebody's stupidity that you think you're going to walk in, and this was her moment. Like she had this. We talked about this last season. Plotted out in her head, probably as she went to sleep at night for weeks. She was picturing, like, and here it is, the final two, and the winner of this year's American Idol is, and, and uh, calling her name, yeah. and she, she walks in there fully expecting, you're going to Hollywood, dog. You know why they're, Woo! and boom, gets You know why she's out. fully expecting? They did a, a, a whole featured piece on her, Little showing her at the expose. mall. She's like, uh, usually she, those people make it. She does, uh, what, uh, makeovers yeah. in the Mall of America. So they had the camera crew following her around for a, for a day. Yeah. So she's thinking, I, I obviously am going to Hollywood. I'm in. But that was just to make it hurt a little more when they tell her, no, you're not going. Yeah. They wanted people to hurt for her. They wanted you to have an investment in her. Right. right. So you hurt. Well, there's three. Actually, now it's, there's three types of people. You see someone's dream get crushed on TV. You're openly laughing, think it's the, the funniest thing ever. Then, like Jimmy said, you got someone that uh, sympathizes with the person, like, oh, my God, this is so sad, and you may even have watery eyes at home. And then there's the third person that it's just so cringy. You, 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 you want to watch, but you're watching with, through your hands. Yeah. Like, my girlfriend's squeezing my arm, like, oh, my God, uncomfortable moment. She could barely watch, and I'm sitting there like, ah! Just laughing. <laughs> right. So what kind of person are you? Here's Jessica. Mm. Does it make you laugh? Does it make you feel bad for her? Or or are you just cringing like it's like a, like a car wreck? You, you kind of 
kind of want to see it, kind of not want to see it. You're, you're, yeah. You got the clicker in your hand, like I gotta change the channel. The but your clicker, you're... Grandpa. I know. Whatever. <laughs> the remote. My grandfather used to have the clicker yeah. when he would watch the Mets games on Channel Nine. <laughs> right. Just the rabbit ears. <laughs> the, yeah, yeah, just with, the aerial with Rusty Staub. <laughs> um. <laughs> Yeah, or you got the remote in your hand, and you, you, you're, you're so close to changing the channel, but you just can't. There's something yeah. there you got to keep watching, and you don't know why. I feel sad for people, man. I, I, Do you really? Oh, not the not the ones that are asses. Like Anthony's yeah. are the ones that expect to be idols. Like they're boobs. Yeah, but there Dopes. are people that just don't have anything. I kind of empathize as a guy who does it for a living. It's like man, I know how much it means to me, and it's like yeah. I really feel like if that's all you hold on to, like your dumb little. You think you're a good singer, yeah. and you're oh, you're mediocre. It's like just but, to see that, just to see you humiliated, kind of bothers me. But here's the deal: when you first started, don't comedy, point at no, me, Rich. Here's the, when you first. <laughs> I know you can't see him anyhow. When you first started comedy, these people have been doing it two or three years, and they expect to be stars without working out. You know, some of these that say you can't get on the show it, with training and whatever, they still can maybe follow their dream. You know, how many comics in two years can get on TV and go, oh, I'm, an, I'm an idol? You know what I mean? So you're feeling sorry for people that are not in the position to feel sorry Here's for. Here's the difference. Here's the difference. Comedy is something you have to work out in front of people. You don't do comedy in your shower. You can't mm -hmm. do comedy when you're alone and get better at it. You can sing alone. You can. People have natural. You know what I mean? It's a different singing vibe. And just to see them just ripped apart, like whatever, it's funny, but it's like it does bother me. It's like, ugh, I got really? now for the rest of your life, you're going to know. Like you, you were really embarrassed. Like you're not good. Like that little private thing that you loved about yourself, you're not good at. Yeah, but you can't be trained to be a good comic. You can be trained to be a good singer. Of course, you can be trained to be a good comic. Not really. On stage no, comic comes from me. No. All right. Why don't we play Jessica and see uh, what kind of person you, you are? <laughs> I, I just openly laugh. I I, I yeah. see that they're emotionally unstable, and that just makes me <laughs> she was that just wreck. makes me just just laugh my ass off. <laughs> it really does. And then and then there's the mom supporting their stupid dream that they don't they don't have a chance at. No. <laughs> Mom's back. Here's, here's Jessica singing a, a Jewel song in front of Jewel. I hear the clock at six a.m. I feel so far oh. from where I've been. Yeah. I got my eggs, I got my pancakes too. I got maple syrup, everything but you. I break the oak to make a smiley face. Uh. I kinda like it in my brand new place. I wipe the sparks for me, leave the keys in the door. I never throw a towel, the floor anymore, cause dreams last for so Thank you. She completely uh, thank believes you. that she's really, really good. Yeah, she thought she sounded just like Jewel. Right. Jewel's sitting there. It's nope. one of her heroes. No clue how awful she really is. Scratch what I said. She should be shot. <laughs> <laughs> she could sing if she's pushing the cleaning cart from one room to another. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is what happened to poor Jessica. Like listening to the record, wasn't it? No. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Funny. <laughs> yes, Simon just nailed her. He is by far my favorite. I That's love, funny. Love Simon. His facial expressions last night. Oh yeah, priceless. Well, and Paul Abdul, they obviously edited all around her. She yeah. was barely part of the show last night. Yeah, because uh, well, based on that interview she gave, wow. She, there's something going on with her. Oh, she uh, all right. She seems to be on. You know, you, you, Rich, you've been through. Uh, <laughs> Some times in your life when you uh, th your addictions, uh, she you might have done a drug or two. She drank so much, Fester got fired again. <laughs> <laughs> Poor she Fester. was so drunk. Say don't, Carter. Fester. Don't goof on Fester. Yeah, come on. Carter's part of it. About the interview that she did on yeah, in the yeah. morning. Yeah, yeah. So bad. Oh. All right, here we go. Like listening to the record, wasn't it? No, Simon, Jewel. stop it. <laughs> stop Jewel. it. Yeah, you <laughs> Jewel, did that sound like you? I don't want to talk right now. I don't think you sounded like Jewel. I think you sounded like Jessica. I was trying to sound like her. <laughs> yeah. I was just like trying Jessica. to put my own little part into it. So. And that you did. You definitely did that. Right, Randy, yes or no? No, the singing, no, 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 no. Okay, Jewel? It's going to take a little work. Keep it up. But no. Pull up. <laughs> I'm going to have to pass through. It's Are you kidding me? Hmm? No, please. Yeah, I'm a for app Jessica. I've got to be a... Here we go. Yes. Tell Here me we what go. I need to work on and I'll try something. Here we go. Uh, Jessica, it would take an hour. No way. In your case. Honest to God, you're so far me? off. No, no way. No. I'm kidding. Please. 
It's not good. No, please. I won't be ignored. She's like the stalker oh. psycho broad. Won't oh. be ignored. I won't be ignored, Dan. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. She's got that in her voice, like she's gonna like turn completely psycho. Yeah. It's not good. No, Gina. please. It's not good. <laughs> No, Jessica, sweetheart, I don't want to patronize you. This is never going to work for you, darling. God, really? It sounds like an uncle's walking in our room. I mean, we're sorry, but it's... Just, we're trying to find the best. That was so far and away from it. I'm sorry, I'm not... There's other things to be great at. You don't have to be a singer. Hold on. No. <laughs> and the good news today is you found out that you're not going to be. Oh. So you can just move on. Thank you, sweetheart. Thanks, sweetheart. Thank you. No. No. Oh, baby. I'm sorry. Oh, oh no, no, no. Don't be sorry. I can't believe it. You I... did your best. Okay, baby. You did your best. You could hear the mom getting fatter, by the way. <laughs> you could hear the mom getting fatter. You did your best. You did your best. You did your best. You did your best. That's my girl. It. You I, did your best. Okay, babe. You did your best. No. Wow. Hey, there's next year, baby. Come on. God, I thought I had it. I really did. I thought I had it. I thought I was ready. Jesus. I that I'm not even a good singer. And the bed is to a foster home. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> That's the type of crying that happens right before the rape kit comes out. <laughs> oh, Jesus, there should be a doll there. <laughs> oh, my God. Jeez, man. I know I'm damaged goods because I find nothing funnier in this world than, than that moment. Her just losing it. <laughs> she had played it out. Jewel was there. Oh, so one of her heroes, her idols, we she's, she played it out in her head. And they, they built her up. To fail miserably. That's the uh, yeah, that's yeah. the great. That's why. That's why the people behind American Idol they're sick. They're they're sick people. They too. know they have to step it up they're and top sick. themselves every year. They are sick. So they did the expose on her, which probably led her to believe she was going to be uh, chosen. Yeah. And then they let her down real hard, right in front of her idol, <laughs> who's sitting right there. It's not coincidence that they picked uh, Jewel to be there after finding out Jewel was this. Uh, girl's idol, yeah. and they set the whole thing up, the expose, put her in front of them. She sings. She's awful. They hammer her. Yeah. What do they expect? Yeah. She broke down like, uh, whoa. Let's go. Awful she, to is listen she, to. Is she awful as like she can never be a singer? Because I don't have real good ears. Yeah, she's that. very bad. Wow. She's Could trying she never... to do uh, an imitation of Jewel, and it's just coming off as this affected, over, un, like, over enunciating yeah. the the affectation of Jewel yeah. on, on a lot of the the words, it's it's horrible. Let's go to Tom in Maine. Tom, what's up? Hey, what's going on? Hey, yeah, I watched that show last night and it was just so awkward that moment. I mean, she's singing in front of Jewel. She's trying to sound like Jewel. It was almost as bad as the Shakira girl singing right. like Shakira. Okay, but the only thing the Shakira girl was really hot. Yeah. <laughs> They just yeah, wanted some hotness in Hollywood. That's yeah. all. That that's what that was all about. How but Tom, you you're saying on the phone that you had to watch through your hands. I don't know. Yeah, I'm laughing my ass off, but at the same time, I'm I'm so embarrassed that I'm watching through my fingers. Yeah, people but. get embarrassed when they have to hold on to somebody or hide their face. I swear to God, I open my eyes so wide and turn up the volume. Oh, just watch. I want to take it all in. Revel. I want to enjoy it all. I had to bail on that audio. I could not listen to it. That was truly uncomfortable. Yeah. I could not listen that to it. That is no. such a surprise coming I from could you. not listen to it. Well, let's uh, continue because I can. <laughs> <laughs> this is just unreal. Like, I, I'm like trying to wait for them to like, come on here and be like, psych. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. I guess that's it. Yeah. It's but thank it, you right. very much. And um, thank you. I for You know, I I gave it my all and I did my best. <laughs> and I I guess that's all I can say. I gotta go now. Jimmy doesn't mind that crying 
when he pays money and they're leaving his apartment. <laughs> then that crying's fun. I'm not a humanitarian. I just I can't listen to that audio. Really? Just truly uncomfortable. What is it about it? Just sad. It's sad. The funniest thing is how Opie really enjoys this. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, I don't know why. I know I'm damaged. Trust me. You can me. see the front I know. of the jeans right now. <laughs> it's, it's unbelievable that somebody I know I'm off. damaged. Trust me, I know that. I got this weird black comedy thing in my head. I mean, when man. the girl forgot the words, that was hilarious yeah. because she really kept going. Yeah. You got her? She was funny just because she was, yeah, just such a dope. Yeah. Yeah, you're going in there, and you don't even know the words to the song you're supposed to be singing. It's this girl went classic. from uh, her major dreams to a cutter now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, she was already a cutter, though. you got to understand that. The girl is emotionally unstable to begin with. Yeah. She's already cutting. This is just going to take it to the next level. I'm not saying they shouldn't be honest. I'm not saying they should, they should, not, they should put her through, because she's stunk. I just the finality of it makes me sad for her. Yeah, uh, just it's over. Just yeah. tell her no. You, you're not. You're not right for this show. Be, you know, know what though? That's just. I wanted to be a goddamn astronaut. All right, and that wasn't going to happen. No, you make too much money now. <laughs> what they, what they do is tell her to cut off. Actually, you can. You can. Yeah. You know what? He makes a good point. You can still be an astronaut. Yeah. You make enough money that you might be one of these guys that gets to yeah. go up in the space shuttle. I wanted to be old school astronaut. You yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah, not like the like the guys that buy their way in. That's not an astronaut. That's a friggin' passenger on a death flight. <laughs> good point, good point. You tell a girl like this to cut off her arm and leg and she can win last comic five. That's what she goes to. Um, <laughs> was, I didn't get it at first. I was just like, all right. You Steven, Steven S. from Bayshore on the instant feedback. Hey, Opie, who will save your soul? The answer, um, nobody. Uh, <laughs> during uh, the commercial break, can we please um, decapitate whosoever chair has been squeaking? Uh, it's this pen. Take this pen away. Is that your... Holy... Holy... <laughs> I'm hol sorry. I swear I was ready to just lay into Voss again, because that's what we do. <laughs> I thought it was you squeak. No, it's You've been squeaking that thing? It's my new OCD Get that thing. goddamn pen away. I didn't hear I've it. heard it the entire break. It's been driving me nuts. <laughs> I figured I wouldn't bring it up. I'd wait till we break, and then obviously it was someone's chair, I thought, because no one... No, could be as obnoxious as to squeak a pen into a live mic I, I for an entire even, break. I wasn't even thinking. It's like my OCD thing. It's my new one. But that's a good one. Attack. All's right with that. When I do has that. to go. All right, listen. All right, here. Wow. Hey, uh, I, going in a break. I gotta play my favorite uh, contestant from last night. My favorite. Yeah. She was uh, she was on at ten oh two. You gotta have the special cable. Yep. You gotta have the special cable to get the uh, the the post uh, American Idol stuff. Oh, what the. Uh... What the news? No, this is one of the contestants from. Oh, uh, I'm not. I didn't understand. Oh. <laughs> I couldn't figure out a better way to set this up. Sorry. <laughs> I, why? It was I'm, perfect. I'm such a dope. I'm like, oh, the DVR. I was sitting be... there thinking the DVR because I know Channel Five News, to, like Fox News, does a little story on Idol right after it. Maybe that's what he's talking. about. Oh, Christ, it's a bit. Very surprised <laughs> that uh, this one is not going to Hollywood. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I, I've got a new life You would hardly recognize me I'm so glad I'm new She might be going to Hollywood, but she's not for singing <laughs> No you, I didn't bother When you're not the one for me Ooh, ooh Is it not enough? I saw the sign And it opened up my eyes I saw the sign Life is demanding Without understanding and you opened up my eyes and saw the sign. No one's gonna drag you up to get into the light where you belong. I missed that. <laughs> we have to have a better relationship with American Idol because she would have killed last night on TV as one of the goofy. Oh, that she'd have been a star. Everybody would have been talking about the I saw the sign girl today. Yep. American Idol, you got, you know, come on, pay attention. She would have been We a got material star. for you. She would have been a star yep. last night, right? Much better than uh, the girl that sang, if, well, I, I, don't know. Did if they do I were the king of the forest. That was hilarious. Oh, the fat girl? Yeah, we'll play that next. I don't know, though. Do they do background checks? Because <laughs> maybe they wouldn't let her on. <laughs> I know they've kicked some contestants off for less. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, the Opie and Anthony Show. Prepare to be wowed. Wow. 
knockers. Whip them out Wednesday. Okay, okay, fine. Wow. Hear what everyone else is talking about. ONA Uncut and Live continuing the show on XM Satellite Radio starting at 9 a.m. Eastern. Visit XMRadio.com to subscribe. It's the Opie and Anthony Show. We have Rich Voss in the studio today. It's the Opie and Anthony Show. Lots going on today. Got to switch gears for a second, then we'll get back to American Idol. Uh, also got to wish Muhammad Ali a very happy 65th birthday. And now that he's 65, does he know? Can we make it illegal for him to do that shadow boxing? The boxing pose for the pictures and stuff? No one's buying it anymore. He's in his pictures in the paper, and he's doing the the pose where he's like, you know, kind of leading with one fist. He's pulling back the other one, ready to pop you with a right or something. I don't think so. That was scary when he was 20, when he was 30, when he was 40. Yeah. When he was 50. Hmm. Sort of scary at 55. Nah, well. Not really scary at 60. And now completely ridiculous at 65. Ridiculous. Uh, Jason's on the phone. Our pal. Well, I don't know if he's a pal. He's a, he's an acquaintance of the radio show. <laughs> uh, the, the, the quick story for the new listeners. Jason used to bring hookers on to the Opie and Anthony show. Ladies of the evening. Yeah. And New York Confidential. And uh, Jason offered us all, Jason Isler, offered us all a free hour of sex. Yeah. With one of these gals. Well, uh, of course, open ant, responsible, turned it down. I felt it was my duty for the show. Obligation to do some research. To greedily sop up my hour like a depraved sponge. And I did with Natalia, his head girl, and she was yeah. fantastic. She wound up uh, getting arrested, too. Yes. She got arrested. She's been featured on the, the covers of magazines. She's been on the Insider a million times. And old Jimmy Norton spent some time with her. I certainly did. Yes. I, I have a Quality feeling that, time. that uh, you're not the only one that... Uh, Took him up on uh, on the free hour because the on whole the show? show was offered. I'm thinking there's one more person somewhere around here that may have uh, no, I don't know for sure that may have uh, secretly went over to the cat house and got their hour. I'm looking around, but uh, yeah, he was busted. He was making a bloody fortune. He's yep. been in jail ever since for a well, long time. 2005, he's, I think. Yeah, he's at Rikers, and uh, I get a lot of messages from Jason at home, but they, I can't call him back. There's no number to call back. If yeah. you call from jail, it's like a really weird call, and then the number never shows up on your. I don't own. know how long we should leave him on hold too. Yeah, right. they don't have and, a limited time and, that they're allowed to call. And he was uh, at the end of his sentence, and now what? They gave you more time, Jason. Uh, well, first of all, it's a pleasure to be on your show. Hey, man. And I want to tell you guys, first of all, right, first of all I better say this to Rich Voss. What? Rich Voss, you're a superstar. Don't don't destroy me today, okay? I oh. love you. You're great. You're amazing. Thank you. Opie and Anthony, you guys were amazing. The last time I was in jail, the first time in my life when I was 34, you have taken it to the next level. You guys are so much fucking better. Excuse oh. the language. <laughs> Whoa, you hey. So you're, you're, you're in prison. TV. You guys are on fire. It's prison I mean, language. It's not a boring minute with you guys. So is your butt. You, sir. <laughs> oh. Jimmy Norton, you know I love you. You're my friend for life. You couldn't get away from me if you wanted to. You're one of the coolest human beings I've ever met. Thank you, sweetie. All right, All right. And, and Norton, if you could please tell them how gorgeous my place was and how I took it to the next level for 30 seconds. It, it, it had to be. I'm gonna, I don't know how much rent you paid there, but it really was a massive suite in like a Soho or wherever. I mean, it was, it was like a 25, palace. 25000 a month I was paying. $25,000 a month. Wow. Right? And it was uh, those different bedrooms. It was just it was hot, man. It was just Sounds built for nice. sex. Built for sex. Do you remember the piano? No, I, I forgot it. I was too worried right, about uh, the organ. Bum, bum. Piano, 26 <laughs> chandeliers, a million dollars in decorating. The place uh, you, it sounds like you're getting a little nostalgic for those days instead of being in Rikers. No, Compa no, no, no. Compared remember, to where you're last staying time I was now, what's it like? When I get out, I'm going to have more gorgeous women and more yes. successful men. Yeah, but you're not getting out anytime soon because you're not smart. What happened? Weren't you at the end of your uh, sentence there? Um, I had to... Um, How many months did you have left uh, and then they tacked on a... Uh, I'm here not No, no, the media... Hold on. You guys should know as well as anyone that the media... When you're the one they're writing about, you're the only one that knows it is not accurate. When I like, if I were to read about you guys in the media, yeah, it would be wrong. Believe fucking freaking everything that I read. <laughs> All right, you gotta stop cursing. Right, basically. I'm gonna just say the f word. Yeah, F. yeah, you gotta stop All cursing right. so we I get you on. How much more ahead. time do you have in uh, Rikers? All right, well, first of all, let me explain this. The way the rules work in Rikers is you get 15 minutes on the phone every yeah. five hours. But luckily for me, I have two inmates with me who are giving me their 15 minutes. Wow. 
so I can go a little longer. All right, luck. One of them, coincidentally, oh. who you might want to talk to at some point, was yeah. a correctional officer here for 12 years. Oof. And he quit in disgust. Uh, he didn't get fired or anything. And then five years later, he got in trouble for some, you know, you know, his wife got him locked up because he was vulnerable, that type of... No one's guilty. Yeah, right, said. right. All right, so he gave you his you 15 watch minutes. Too. Oh, okay. Another fellow prisoner gave you 15 minutes. So what are you gonna have to do? It? Hold on. What are you gonna have to do in return? You just you just don't get 15 minutes from another prisoner. Cigarettes. Minutes. Oh, I, I have to um I have to grease up my tushy and no I'm kidding. All I got to do is ask. Oh okay. All right. Yes. Um I'm I'm in the nicest way. I'm kind of a celebrity on Rikers Island. Oh yeah. A little, it doesn't take much to be a celebrity here. Jason, I'd rather be a celebrity in New York City or America, but you know. What happened, dude? You're in the paper now. There was a fight you had. I've uh, been in the paper every day since Wednesday. What happened about with a fight between you and uh, a Rikers inmate known as Angelina Jolie? Uh, <laughs> I have to ask. It's, it was it was in the, it was in the Daily News. I mean, right, by the way, first of all, as you could imagine, the absolute single most humiliating thing that can happen on Rikers Island is to get your ass kicked by a transsexual. Right. All right. And I got, I didn't only get my ass kicked, I got my ass kicked so bad that I was put into a coma and I was sent to Elmer's Hospital where they put me through a CAT scan and told me I have dra brain trauma. And they said, Jason, consider yourself a boxer and your career is over. One more hit to the head and you'll get an embolism, brain damage, or you could die. Wow, wow. and a tranny did that? <laughs> because Rikers Island, I don't know what you know about this place, but this is a third world country. Yeah. I was, you see, I have a lawyer named Paul Bergrin, yes. who is probably one of the three most powerful and scary individuals in the New York, New Jersey area. We know him. He was a major in the Army, which is just below general. We know him. He worked on another case uh, close to our hearts. Uh, the Javel Davis case? No, the uh, Club Soda Kenny case. <laughs> is that true? <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, well, uh, he, let's tell the people who don't general? know, because not everyone has a knowledge that gentlemen have. Yeah, right? He was a federal prosecutor in New Jersey for 15 <laughs> years, which is about 100 times juicier than a state prosecutor, as you know, but not everyone knows. Look, Jason, I know you have all the time in the world, but you gotta, you, you got to like uh, yeah. do some bullet points here. We don't have uh, well, a well, long time. What, what happened? I was, with I was scared out of my wits that they were going to misquote me in the post and, right. and maybe have Paul Bergrin a little bit mad at me. Right. So I was begging this... CO officer to please let me see the article in the paper to see if I was quoted correctly or incorrectly because I said only the nicest things about him. And was he running your business while you were at Rikers? I found out about it in the New York Post. The New York Post. You had no idea this lawyer was running your uh, your business while you were in Rikers? Of course not. And then I and then Mel Sachs and my father sent him about fifty letters demanding that he shut it down because all it could do was get me in more trouble. So what happened with that? Now the yeah. transsexual was on the phone and heard you asking to see the article about yourself. No, no, no. The, a CO officer, a correctional officer, okay. was teasing me. Jason, yeah, you could see in five minutes. No, I paid a quarter for it. You know, you're an inmate. You can't have it. Back and forth for half an hour. That's how they treat people here, some of them. Some of them are nice guys, like two or three percent of them. So what happened with the tranny? Yeah, what happened with the tranny? How'd right, that well, get the started? Tranny, the tranny wanted to transfer out of where I am, where like the celebrity <laughs> section. Uh -huh. Or where they keep people that are like just total, total. Well, you call it the celebrity thing. section. Who else is... Uh around you that you would consider a celebrity what crime do they do well i mean lilo brancato is a has-been he was a celebrity when he was 17 in one movie which he got paid twenty five thousand for the bronx tale oh, all right he's, so he's considered a celebrity. but then again he's probably the only star who's ever killed a cop in the history of america it's more like protective custody so it's it you know like he, the, he was saying the corrections officer that all of a sudden he's in jail you know you can't just put him in general right hello oh jason's See? gone See, I knew that would works. happen. He's, we would no, never no, no. get to the tranny story. But in all, in all fairness, he said he had 40 minutes. Yeah, but in all fairness, the guy cannot stay on track. I wanted to. We were trying to guide him toward the tranny story, that and it, yeah, and that's all we really wanted to know about from him today, and we got nothing. It's, got, hard, it's hard to tell a story when you're looking over your shoulder every two seconds to see who's coming up well, behind you. Well, now that, that is, and well, what does the paper say, Jimmy? The paper says he might call back. The paper said he was uh, a self proclaimed uh, uh, was humbled Saturday when a transsexual Rikers Island inmate known as Angelina Jolie sent him to the hospital. <laughs> Itzler, who's behind bars, reigning over blah, 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 uh, clashed at Rikers with Shannon Walker, 29, uh, Sharon Walker, I'm sorry, a full-breasted man who goes by the name of the Pouty Beauty. <laughs>
<laughs> Walker tried to punch at me, so I grabbed her in a bear hug, Isler told the Daily News. She took two fingers and stuck them deep into my eyes. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to editorialize and say, Jason, believe me with those fingers, it could have been worse. <laughs> uh, Isler 39, alleged an unnamed correction officer, let her punch me in the face eight or ten times. He let her kick me in the head till I was out cold, and the CAT scan did find severe brain trauma. Um... Angelina was on the phone, he said. She walked up to me and said, if you don't shut your mouth, I'm going to break your face. And even though she wow. has a penis, she looks like a woman. I've never hit a woman in my life. She, every wait, wait, oh. Jason. So, come back, you, come back. so you didn't fight back because you, uh, you don't punch women in the face, even though this guy had uh, uh, male... Uh, first of all, have any of you three hit a woman in your life? No, but a, but tran a tranny that's, that's not a woman? Tell me isn't a woman. That's not a woman? This, this person took all those chemicals and has size C breasts. Okay. And milks them for all they're worth. Right. Now, her face, I don't know if you saw it. Did you see Chris Rock in New Jack City? Yes. <laughs> Imagine that face, cr a cross between that face and Mike Tyson's big, big fat moon head. <laughs> <laughs> That's the head on Angelina Jolie. Oh, uh, so she's right. an ugly tranny. All right. But, but the body looks like a woman. Yeah. And all these, I'm not going to say retards in jail because they'll kick my ass. Yeah. All these fine gentlemen that I'm in jail with um, look at her like a woman. And sit close to her, and and you, you know what I'm saying. You yeah. Use her. So yeah. okay, exactly. So, so why did you have a problem with her? Well, this or um, that's what I'll get to. And, and remember, I have all the time in the world. I just got to keep calling back. We, we no, don't, we, we don't. don't. Because of commercials. We have yeah, a very very we, tight schedule because the commercial loads, oh, and no, we have no, to leave no, here. I'm, I'm like Donald Trump. No commercials today. Just kidding. Just kidding. All right. So what, what exactly happened with Trump her? Call you. That's guy's so annoying. When Donald Trump called you. Jason, what happened with her? Yeah, what happened? Right. She wanted to transfer for seven days, but in this place, when you want something. You don't get it. You got to pretend you don't want it to get what you want. Yeah. Okay? See, you getting you're getting sidetracked again. Right, Just talk about the fight. The general population, so she can make money giving sex to people and getting sex. Right. right. All right. She couldn't get sex in where I am. The only way to get moved is to get into a fight. Oh. I'm known as the only person on this island who will take punches and not punch back. Oh. I need the telephone from my PR campaign. Okay. If you go to the box, you don't get the telephone. I need the telephone, and I can take a punch. So she wow. comes up to me, tells me she's going to break my face, and I walk away, you know? And then after she gets off the phone, she comes charging at me. Oh, and um, I tell the, the, the CO officer, I'm like, listen, man, I don't want to get into a fight. This, this uh, guy girl in cell one wants to kick my ass. So, uh, oh, by the way, at any moment, like, like the, the goon squad could come in here and start beating me with bats. Wait, you like, snitched? I'm not allowed to tell the secrets of this island. You snitched to a CO officer that somebody wanted to beat you up and they didn't kill you? And they didn't what? Kill you, you for snitching? Almost did. You're admitting on the air that you, 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 told, uh, you told the CO and that you don't like to punch back well, and no, that you can take a punch. Was, I asked permission to have a fight because if you get permission to have a fight, you can't go to the box. Oh, really? Okay. So, but I didn't want to say that because I would get, I don't want to get anyone in trouble, all right? But, um, so anyway, so this, this girl guy is about to punch me, so I hug her. Like, you know how boxers, like, tangle up and they yeah. can't seem to right. punch each other? I thought I'd learned that from watching Mike Tyson all these years. From watching boxing, sure, exactly. you could learn that, yeah. So when I grab her, she takes two fingers and pushes one of my eyeballs three inches into my, into my head. Oh, all right? oh wow. And starts scratching my and starts scratching my face. I immediately let go of her. She starts punching me in the face like a man. She is a man, all right? So I wrestled in high school and college. What I did was I kept one hand at my side, and I grabbed her windpipe with the other hand because in this island, they don't love white people so much, and they certainly don't like Jewish people. You guys know I'm Jewish, right? Right. Oh, okay? So I can't hurt her. I've never heard it called a windpipe before, but... <laughs> and first of all, I don't hate girls, and second of all, if I do anything wrong, they, they want to bury me. They don't like that I'm in the paper all the time, stuff like that. These people have pretty shitty lives here. Uh, well, you but, could say they have... Pretty crappy lives oh, here. So yeah, that's they have crappy right. lives. Right. They, that's they okay. Have, they have, um, yeah. This oh, I love the life. fact that he, he won't punch a woman in the face, but he fully supports prostitution. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, that's not. You're true. brilliant, man. Jason. When are you? You're getting brilliant. Out? You guys, let me on the show in a couple of weeks. I'll read you a letter from one of my escorts who's currently starring in the play Wicked on Broadway. <laughs> and you'll see. Really? I What's your name? My girls like gold, and they had the time of their life with me. Wait. And I am not a pimp. I am a visionary businessman. Wait, What's the girl's name who's on who's in Wicked? 
oh, the girl's name with this on Wicked because I'm a loser that would, would reveal the privacy of a girl that I love is... I'm not telling. Oh, it's the Wicked whore Wait, of the West. All right, but one of the cast members of Wicked, this is big news, uh, used to work for you. Are you kidding? Do you have any idea? Was it Julia? Hold on, do you know the politicians that use my place? Was it Kendra? Oh, you know boy. the billionaires that use my place? Was it David? Secrets. I have more well, that's a guy. than Jake, J. Edgar Polit Hoover. Politicians, huh? Jenna? Do you remember J. Edgar Hoover? Yes. Of course. You know how he had a file on everyone in America? Did he beat yeah. Yeah. I got a bigger one, and I'll tell you this. The Daily News confirms it. Not one of my clients was arrested or hassled. All right, let's make some news today. Give me a name. Give me a, a high-profile name of someone you have nothing to lose that used your service. I right, put it this way. In 30 to 60 days... You got 30 seconds, by the way. <laughs> what do you mean I got 30 seconds? You, you reveal a name right now. Let's go. Oh, okay. Then you'll let me roll, rock and roll, right? Yeah. You, then you can do whatever the hell you want. You can take over the entire show. A name. Fuck. Uh, well, Stop you, cursing! Those, those, aren't, those aren't names. I said those are, fa, fa, F-U-H. All right, yeah, we learned this much, though. Enough. This is this is something the paper will be interested in. Uh, a cast member of the play Wicked okay, that's on Broadway he, here in New York City Yeah. Uh, used to work for Jason, who's on the phone oh, live God, from the, Rikers. The, the DOA wants to hang up the phone. I mean... <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, that seems to be uh, it for uh, Jason. All right. Someone hung the phone up. What is DOA, Ken? Do you know? On arrival. No, I know. No, that. That, that, what's DOA in the old joint? No, all right. The Whatever. DOA. The you don't think this guy's going to get stabbed in prison? He's you nuts. Know, you should have an over-under on one. He, he, he is really annoying, but he's nuts, and, uh, you know. He gives us good radio. I want to yeah. know how much, how much time he's got left, because he was saying he's going to be out in a month and out in a month, and I hear he's got four years tacked on, but oh. that might not be true. Uh, yeah, we're hearing they tacked on, and I heard he, another year. Oh, yeah. But, okay. but I've also heard four years. Yeah, Jimmy, you're right. So wow. something's going on. He said he hugged the transvestite, and then she poked him in the eye. That's never happened to you, has it? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> All right, listen. Not that eye. <laughs> listen, we're going we're gonna to step aside. Quick break. Hopefully he'll call back. We'll get more from Jason from uh, Rikers. I don't think he'll be calling back. I want to apologize to WISP in Philly. I guess right in the middle of that very interesting radio, they had to run their stupid national contest. What? Something they warned us about, but it's just awful radio. Oh. They just cut into the show. Doesn't matter. Just cut in, and it's like 15 seconds of blah, 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 blah. Some dumb national contest they're doing. And wow. I, and I have to mention it because the instant feedback's going nuts. Like, uh... They have the worst timing in the world right in the middle of the setup of who you were talking to. They went into this national contest. That's good for the show. Sweeper. A uh, sweeper? Something, yeah. Oh, man. I don't know exactly because I'm not uh, listening to YSP right now. So. Is it call at 3 o'clock and know. blah, blah, blah? If you have to do that, maybe you can figure out you know when, it's, uh, when it makes the most sense. I would only forgive that if it was for the Carter and Fester show. <laughs> Carter and Fester? All right, uh, more with Jason, hopefully, from uh, Rikers and some other things. It's the Opie and Anthony Show. I love showing my to introverted fat guys. We whip them out Wednesday. Whip them out Wednesday. This is the Opie and Anthony Show, Rich Voss's studio. Rich, uh, promoting anything today? Uh, just quick, uh, Comedy Central Countdown. Vote for Voss at Comedy Central Countdown. And the Palms Casino, uh, February 10th. Ooh, Palms Casino, the 10th. The Palms. Yes. Hotline is ringing again. The, uh, oh, might be Jason. I'm surprised you do the casinos. A little rough for you. You want to bet? I sit and watch Bonnie. Do you? I sit right there. Oh, tell her what to do. Every pole. The back street better. A back back seat better. Oh, Did, back street. You gave up. <laughs> Jesus. You gave up Thank gambling, you. but you play through her. I don't play. I just watch her and hope she wins. Do you give any suggestions on slots? Yeah, usually oh. left hand. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So maybe she was playing cards. No. But I watch those things on TV. I think I could be one of those championship champions in the uh, the seven card. You know how you see them on TV? Poker? Yeah. I, please. Like how hold hard? them? Yeah. Yeah, I think I could go. Yeah. Oh, how hard boy. could it be? Yeah, sure. What? Yeah, go ahead. World Series of Poker. Where's the logic? Why do you think you could uh, do well with that? Because I know how to, uh, how to bull, you know, because you're a cop. You know how... How to read people and bull and yeah. stuff. Yeah, I guarantee I, and I would bull? know. And bull? A bull crap. Oh, you know, oh, okay, okay. I get got the, uh, get get people's tells and Well, you did like it. That. Didn't you feel like you could have won? No. You did? No. Every, everybody that plays uh, hold them for any length of time, like 
a couple of weeks, you always think, I think I could go to the World Series of Poker and, and do... No. They, no. Chew, they chew you up and spit you out. Yeah. I thought I was good when we went... When I did that tournament once, the celebrity tournament thing. And that was, you know, what, a couple of years ago? You were middle of the I've still been playing. Yeah, I know, but, but before, when, when the pros when the pros act, came in, act. it was Jesus. over. Phil Gordon came in. It was he sits down to like, I sit here. I got my chips, and I was just like, I'm gonna, done, I'm done, done. Did he whip you? Oh, I was a girl. I couldn't do anything. I was a little short stacked, so you know, I, I didn't have them, at that many chips on the table. And he comes over with these trays of chips, and he's just bullying everybody. Because then you can't bet. You bet something. He's just gonna like bet. Ten times more, so now you're committed. You know, it's it's now or never. You're either out or in. You know, so if you don't have a good enough hand, you got to fold. Yeah, but if you had the good hands, you would have had those chips, and you could have bullied him. You just didn't get the hands in the beginning. To no, there are, there are people that get the stacks of chips with no hands. They just know how to how to bet and play and and scare people into thinking they have the the good hands. Make you fold a bluff, yeah. Yeah, if you're sitting there and, and there's a, a possibility that somebody has a flush on the board, yeah, and you know you're sitting there and somebody might have a pair, and uh, he bets, and you just nail over the top of him and, and bet twice what he bet, the guy's gonna start thinking, maybe this guy's got a flush, you know, and uh, sometimes you get him to fold like that. Meanwhile, the guy had nothing. But he's raking in the chips. And Rich, the wide-eyed look on your face and the dumb head nod yeah. means that you, you'd you probably start eating chips. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tell right there. It tells everyone you're a dope. <laughs> there's, there'd be all characters. There's the Unabomber and you there with a dunce hat. <laughs> <laughs> the dunce. Rich the dunce boss. What would be your bluff move? I, I would uh, first... Hey, and what would your what would your outfit be for uh, for holding? Would you have a gimmick? Would you have a gimmick? Would you have a like a a hoodie on pulled tight around your face? No, would you I'd go with the sunglasses, go. like a little Unabomber action. I would go comfortable. I would wear a nice T-shirt, probably my New York Dolls, my lucky T-shirt, lucky T-shirt, of and uh, big Star of David card protector <laughs> that you put on so they don't take <laughs> your cards. And I just I you know I used to play cards, so I mean I know. You know, you know the bluff. suits. I just know <laughs> when. To <tr> <laughs> what do you know? I, I know when to, you know, to you know, if I have a good hand, how how to su draw somebody in. Minutes to learn, a lifetime to master. They say. Oh, whatever. I, you know, and you're I, just like I've played cards before. I played pinochle. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe you could sit there with your bag and be rich, the tranny Voss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> All right, whatever, Rich. Yeah. Good luck to you. Yeah, good luck. World Series of Poker. Cash in that bag. Yeah. And uh, maybe that'll cover the entry fee. <laughs> uh, attorney found naked in courthouse with 14-year-old. I'd say that's a headline you'd never, ever want to be part of. This is... Uh, if you're an attorney, especially. I guess as, uh, I guess as far as all the stories we covered today, this is the story of the day. Yeah, this guy wasn't using uh, discretion. Happened in <laughs> Philly, huh? Philly. What up, Philly? Was that the contest? <laughs> it was on Martin Luther King's uh, birthday, too. On Martin Luther King Day, the courts were closed, but they were open for, they leave it, the court open if lawyers want to conduct some kind of after-hours business. <laughs> he was conducting some business in a little conference room. Right. Completely naked. Or have sex with your mistress. Mistress. This was his goddaughter. Goddaughter? Goddaughter. Yeah. And he was 49? Yep, 49. She's 14. He was completely naked. A sheriff's deputy found him naked with a 14-year-old girl in a courthouse conference room. Walked into the conference room. A sheriff's oh, deputy wow. walks into the conference room. There's the guy naked, 14-year-old girl. In the, what do you say? It's a sheriff's deputy finding you. You can't... Where, what's your defense there? Die. Die. He's using the die defense. There's nothing you can say. 49 has been charged with solicitation, attempted statutory sexual assault, and related counts. Uh, a sheriff's deputy making his rounds in the criminal justice center on Monday afternoon looked into a lawyer's conference room on the third floor and discovered Charles and the girl. He had asked for he had asked for sex, but there was no physical contact. We're aware of uh, by the time the deputy arrived. Deputy just arrived in time. Scene. Yeah, just in time. Saved yeah. this girl. Is there any uh, more to this story that we know? I don't know. I, I think he'll be disbarred. <laughs> I think <laughs> that's a little obvious. But, uh, man, 
uh, what I wonder what he was doing, like taking all of his clothes off, and she's just standing there. Apparently, they hadn't cut a deal or anything. Or the, the, were they doing this before? I need a little backstory on it. He's think, the godfather for the, of this girl. So I think they were doing it before. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he was he was going for another round, and, uh, I think and he there got was caught. Some comment from the one of the parents saying that you know he's very trustworthy, and they were shocked, and blah blah Those blah. Are the kind ones of you got to look at. Look out! The trustworthy ones are the ones you got to look at. Did he very coach? Closely. Did he coach the little league team or well, I'm the sure soccer team or. I'm sure more will come out as Put far as that story goes. One of those situations, and we you're around children. You hope people are shocked because if you're naked with a 14 year old and the girl's parents are like, we kind of expected that. Yeah, yeah. he's done it before. We're yeah. trying to. Yeah, what, what are you going to do? We talked to him. Life of the party, this guy. It's time. Oh. It's time. God. Nothing you have ever seen before and nothing you have ever heard before will prepare you for the shock of. My baby is black. Now, the motion picture screen reaches its full maturity in this dramatic, bold story never before told on the screen. What do My we know? baby is black, and I'm dodging it. <laughs> <laughs> what do we know about this film? It's from 1961. 61? Uh, yeah, a little film called My Baby is Black. E-Rock, you do a little research on the internet? It's a uh, French import art film. Hmm. And what was the purpose of this film? Really just to sh uh, show a white lady dating a black guy and how everybody was not happy with it. The dangers of the black man and the white woman. Yeah. 61. Right. Yeah. Mm, we, were getting, we were getting there by 61. Barely. Barely, but kind of. We, we just got on the highway. Y yeah. <laughs> we just got yeah. on the highway. So this kind of... <laughs> I, I bet it went over very well, especially we, down south. Just about on the highway, just adjusting the seats, yeah. Yeah. And the mirrors, getting I, the right freaking station on. I think we had probably <laughs> muzzled up the German Shepherds and capped up the fire hydrants just a by little 61. Bit. A little bit. For the most part, in most civilized cities. <laughs> Sorry, Alabama, we're not talking about you. No. no I make my daughters watch that movie every night. Is that... <laughs> <laughs> he had him growing up to it, like where you would normally put in the Little Mermaid. <laughs> Two rules. Put this in. All right, well, no blacks and no colored. Let's oh. play some uh, more more clips from My Baby Is Black from 1961. In this clip, uh, class watching an educational film, social workers talk about um, civilizing black kids. Oh, okay. Hello there. Have a bonbon. They're like puppies. You train them with candy. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, Are you kidding me? They're like puppies you train them with candy. No, because when you get mad at them, you can't take them in the woods and shoot them. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> this comes on the day that Obama is basically saying he's he's going for it. Well, this is many years We've ago. We've come a long way. Maybe it is time. We've come can, a long you way. You can just tell how long we've... We've come. I know. Bonbons are so fattening. Who eats them? <laughs> <laughs> Hello there. Have a bonbon. They're like puppies. You train them with candy. Here. What can you do? They're more polite to strangers than to us, and we do everything for them. Quite discouraging. How long have you been in social work? Not long enough to understand them. Not even a smile from you, Jamal. Not a bit of gratitude. You try to help civilize them. You give them decent houses so they can live like people, not animals. Give them real houses and they make pigsties out of them. They live with their lice and their dirt. No, believe me, mister, I know them well. I've tried everything, threats and kindness. Nothing works against their stubbornness, their laziness. Besides, they're sneaky and liars. Miserable. They should be isolated and disinfected, too. Believe me, sir. Discipline is important. A strong hand would do them much good. I remember how I said I would never get married again. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> You'd marry her? I might just... <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Teasing, of course. She's a That's horrible, a horrible point. woman. Is this amazing That's or what? Points. You insane, Rich? <laughs> wow, this is really... um. Not liberal. <laughs> I mean, you know, 
I think we have to hear more of what she says. Of course. All right. Get a point to it. The next clip, uh, Professor discusses film during Talk About Color Lecture. Talk About Color Lecture. Okay. Unfortunate. But that's the way most people think today. For them, the African, the Negro, can never be anything. The Negro. The Negro. Okay, now he's refuting her claims, I guess. Is what it sounds like. Unfortunately, this is how people think. This is a good cop, bad cop. Yeah, good cop, bad happening. cop. But he's calling them the Negro. Try it at home. The Negro. <laughs> it's fun to say. <laughs> it the rolls off the tongue. Negro. Unfortunate. But that's the way most people think today. For them, the African, the Negro, can never be anything. <laughs> the Negro. The African, the Negro. <laughs> I'm going to say that all day now. The Negro. Unfortunate. But that's the way most people think today. For them, the African, the Negro, can never be anything but inferior. It is useless to tell these people otherwise. Is this the philosophy lecture? No, it's a talk about color. We have just seen a story on the... <laughs> <laughs> is this the Opie and Anthony show? That's Alan Cohn's <gasps> grandfather. <laughs> hey, uh, let's say hi to Mark in Hoboken. Mark, what's up? Oh, I love it. I love it. I, we, we, should, we should have that lady today. Uh, she hit it right on the head. You know, you have to train them. Uh, oh, here oh, we go. Jesus. Oh, boy. It's just, here here they come oh, out of the boy. woodwork. Oh, thinking, boy. Maybe thinking that this is an, a real educational uh, uh, film we're playing. Maybe Obama doesn't have a shot. See, that's what All I'm right. telling That's what I'm talking about. The we're listeners playing are turning this. me, I guess. I like playing these things because it shows, like, the, the, it's, it's nostalgia. It shows where we were as opposed to where we are right now. And then you get calls like that, and and that's when I go, see? He doesn't have a chance. I'm all excited about there's, Obama. There's too many. Too I'm many at, of, the, of the guys like that. I'm looking at the possibilities, and then uh, the listeners remind me, oh, yeah. Who's running for office? Oh, yeah. The, the Negro. Negro. <laughs> My president is black. <laughs> the Negro. Well, Frank, it looks like... He's a Negro. No, it's a talk about color. We have just seen a story on the Arab, who is a white man. Comprehend me. Practically speaking, we could equally well have used any racial minority as victims. Mm. The yellow race, for example. The yellow peril. Unfortunate. <laughs> the yellow, yellow peril? The yellow the, peril. The yellow peril. Wow. Wow. It's a little harsh. Sounds like a tongue twister. Yellow peril, yellow peril, yellow That is hard. Yellow peril, yellow, yeah. That's impossible to say. Well, let's just say it once. <laughs> yellow peril. Racial minority is victims. The yellow race, for example. The yellow peril. Unfortunately, racism is a leper. Gaining more ground every day, and as such, should be dealt with seriously and intelligently. Is anyone race on earth superior? Um, Put your hand down, Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. How about we not answer that question, Anthony? How about we just play track for I just wanted to answer, and I raised my hand first. <laughs> I thought I'd be picked on, and okay, I won't answer it. Uh, next track, White Friend asks Black Man about shaving. From My Baby is Black, 1961. White friend, black ma ask a black man about shaving. Okay, okay. Uh, good morning. Good morning. I wonder why you shave like that. You don't have any more... Stereotypical white guy. I wonder why you shave like why that. Why do you shave like that? With a gun to my back. <laughs> that white woman. <laughs> yes, holding the razor with your foot. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> Sounds like, uh... Sounds like the character from the Flintstones you do. Ah. ah, but I am Rock Quarry. Yeah, Rock Quarry, thank you. Hey, Negro, why do you shave like that? I'm Rock Quarry. <laughs> but I am Rock Quarry. <laughs> Listen again, it's Rock Quarry. Uh, good morning. Good morning. I wonder why you shave like that. I you don't have any more. <laughs> 
I wonder why you shave like that. Ah, using that piece of broken coconut. <laughs> Man. God. No wonder Halle Berry just lost her mind when she won an Academy <laughs> yeah. Award. And like, I guess we really know, don't understand. We, we just don't get it. We don't get it. Like, right. this is just so bad. And this is supposed to be good. Yeah. As opposed to good. Yeah, this is supposed to be like the anti-racism. This is supposed to be helpful. Yeah. <laughs> this is helping the colored. Well, maybe they should take it out of the comedy section of uh, Blockbuster. <laughs> is that where it is? <laughs> Right next to 48 Hours. <laughs> I love that movie. Good morning. I wonder why you shave like that. You don't have any more beard than a hen's egg. Right. It's a stupid habit. Why do you say that? Because, anyway, I prefer looking like this to looking like, to looking like the good Negro. Which one is that? Well, the one who shines shoes. The one who is always so polite. The one who always says thank you whenever he gets his tips. Sound like Michael oh. Richards there too. The uh, that was the black guy talking, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's talking about how he did he shave or not shave? I can't figure this out. He, he wants to be better than the shoe shine black. He wants guy. to be better than the shoe shine black guy who has yeah. the scruffy beard. Yeah. So he shaves even though he doesn't have much hair. Yeah, like, yeah. Just so he can because it to, curls up or something. Yeah, he's trying yeah. to keep all uh, kept. Right. Right. And the guy's the white guy's so stupid. He's so, like, why bother? And us, us whitey would know the difference between thinking he shaved his entire body. <laughs> he shaves. Stupid he's, whitey. He's clean shaven, so he's nothing like the shoe shine black guy. Yeah, right. Shoe yeah. shine. E grow. This guy would be classified back then as uppity <laughs> because he's he was kind of you know hey. He's kind of coming into his own. Yeah, well. He said, well, Mouthing off. You don't have more hair than a hen's egg. That could a be hen's the, egg. The best term for a smooth face that I've ever No! Heard. I hear the music. I know. I'm sorry. Son of a bitch. We gave him a little taste. We got, uh, I don't know, at least 15 more clips to go. Oh, God. At least we got into it a little bit. Amazing bastard. We'll continue tomorrow with such tracks as Interracial Love Has to Overcome Barriers. You. Parents freak out discovering daughter's pregnancy. Oh, no. Black neighbor tells girl her boyfriend was arrested. <laughs> black boyfriend in jail for hitting a butcher, torturing a black kid. And dream sequence, deciding to have the baby or not. All on the next Opie and Anthony show as we look into My Baby is Black from ah. 1961. All right, Rich, uh, give that plug again. Palms, February 10th, Comedy Central Countdown. Both of me. All right, very, very good. Hey, guys, thanks so much. If you like what you're hearing, please tell a friend. That's how we spread the ONA virus. It's the Opie and Anthony Show. If you're not joining us over at XM, have a great day. Enough of this palaver. Let's get the show on the road. Ah, let's. Second half of the Opie and Anthony Show has begun. Yes. On uh, XM Satellite Radio. And I don't know if we're doing the walkover anymore. Well, not anymore anymore. We're kind of... We're going to kind of do a day-by-day uh, -day basis? I don't know. Yeah. It's... Um, we I would say weather permitting. <laughs> well, he, well... But I think it would be fun if uh, there's a blizzard or it's snowing really hard. Oh, yeah. Blizzard or snow would be cool. Just to, That's fine. Because that would be so different. But for the most part, I think the walkover is over until March. Typically, it's not as cold when it's snowing as it is when uh, it, it's not snowing and it's just cold out. Right. And especially in a blizzard. In blizzards, it's usually not uh, that cold. Yeah. Basically, we want to rest I'd love to do it in a blizzard. That would be kind yeah. of fun. We still walk, by the way. We still walk every day from you know the other place to here. So we encourage the, the fans to still show up and do the walk with us. And then we invite you upstairs. They're letting people upstairs right now. But I think it's time to kind of rest a whole bit. I was out the door of uh, Free FM, our FM affiliate, uh, out the door and walking. Jimmy was right there. Keeping up is the term you're looking for. Yeah. Keeping up. I, I, I got here in record time. I, I, no one could see me. I was looking at the sidewalk, and all I saw were feet that would kind of come close to me and then realize I wasn't moving because I can't see you, yeah. so get the fuck out of my way, and stepping over like holes in the sidewalk. I have my hood pulled up. See? You made fun of my parka. Now it comes in handy. Well, I got a, a very similar one. I know. Very warm. You look almost like twins. I put my little gloves on. 
Uh, I was I was I was warm, and then Jimmy's asking me, "You called?" He called. He goes, "How about?" You? And then a a wind blew, and he goes, "How about your legs?" I go, "Yeah, they're a little cold now. It blows right through." And all I'm thinking is, what it would be like to be crossing that street and get hit by a car, and have to lay there in that like on the cold concrete, like with a broken leg or a broken femur. Or oh something. my Compound god! Do you fracture? think that would would like take your mind off of how freezing cold no. it is to lay on the pavement? Or just add to it. I don't know how it. Voss does that walk in a skirt. Because <laughs> the wind had to just be blowing up. <laughs> blowing right up your pussy. Can you imagine the biggest spirit? Yeah, your mic's, mic's off. Oh, why would it be on? Uh, mic's off. So he turns his headphones up. <laughs> Rich, you Holy off. fucking Jim. mission control. Well, I, I can't turn it Rich. What? The, see the silver button that's been in front of you on the back of that microphone? I can't believe you can't figure out how to turn your mic see on. that thing? No, the button on top. On top, dude. That thing. There yeah. you go. As long as the other button's pushed, that should work. Speak. Is it on? No. No. It was for a split second. Uh, Is that snapping? What are you doing, Rich? I'm trying to push the button. Which button are you trying to push? The silver on the back. Is that the right button, Nate? Talking to it now. Yeah. My, I'm on. All right. Rich is pushing a button. Go ahead, Rich. Uh, okay. Hold on. Oh, you guys are messing with me. No, we're not messing with you. I can't wait. There's no button. You've never hit that button on the show since you've been here. Never. What about the button that's next to the headphones? There should be a button or a knob or something. Don't make it too loud or the mic will uh, distort. Yeah. Oh, I can hear you guys good. Yeah. All right. That's all that counts. Okay. <laughs> you got it turned on now? I don't know. There it is. I hear you. For real? Yeah. Just not through the mic, though. No, no through we the can mic. hear you. Oh, cool. Yeah, go ahead, talk. I don't know are your I'm headphones? Here. Yeah, my headphones are perfect. What were we talking about? Oh, You're walking over in the walkover in a skirt. Oh, I would, there was no rebuttal. That was my hilarity. <laughs> my hilarious joke. Why is there no rebuttal? We're talking about wind blowing up your pussy. My snatch. It's not a pussy. It's a snatch. Okay. Your snatch, right. Uh, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Could anything you said be about hit by a car and laying in the cold... How horrible. <laughs> what? What are you laughing at? I was just turning up your mic because I could barely hear you. Go ahead. It is low. How horrible. <laughs> How horrible. Can you imagine these people that ice skate and fall through the water? And you are the dumbest <laughs> human being. I Rich. Just, what the fuck? Are we it's on break? New no. content. Oh, are, we on break? The fuck? are we on break? <laughs> what a dummy. Of course we are. Uh, uh, how could you not love Rich? <laughs> American dummy. If you think you're dumber than Rich Voss, give us a call. Rich, how this is how... not love Rich Voss? I just Voss. didn't have your mic on. There you go. Go ahead. Okay. Hey, there's Rich Voss, there ladies and gentlemen. Rich Voss joining the you program were today. To push a button behind the mic that doesn't exist. I know. I was stabbing <laughs> myself with this little metal thing. Okay, so you got me on a technical uh, technicality. A, te uh, a technical. Uh, don't touch that. It does nothing. I know. I know. <laughs> little metal exactly thing. Exactly none. Uh, All right. So my mic wasn't on, but I was saying how when you know what was talking about falling on the cold, how horrible it's got to be. These people that fall through ice when yeah. they're ice skating. <sighs> I don't think uh, I don't think that is as bad as just being out in the cold. I think when you fall through the ice, at first it really sucks, but very quickly you just don't feel it anymore. You lose consciousness and you're dead. I, but but having to having to walk a few blocks now that's bad. <laughs> All right, I didn't, I'm not into, it. and and I got like zero sleep. I napped like a, a, a like an, a, an old man or a baby when I got home, and it screwed me up so bad. And then I'm an idiot. I'm like I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. <laughs> Instead of putting on something because I can fall asleep, I fall asleep with the TV on. I should put on something that I don't want to watch. But even stuff I've seen a thousand times, like I'm thumbing through the channels, and I could put on some bad. Friggin' chick flick or something awful that I know I'd fall asleep to in two seconds, and I put on Apollo 13. Like I know I'm not going to sleep to that, so I'm looking at the clock and I'm going, I'll I'll be asleep before you know they even says Houston we got a problem, and there it is, splashdown! Apollo 13 has made it back. I'm like I watched the whole goddamn movie. Now it's, it's two in the morning <laughs> and I gotta get up like now in a couple hours. I'm an Great. asshole. A fucking idiot. <laughs> That's me last night. I'm a fucking idiot. I watched the whole movie. 
I know how it ends and everything. Oh, fucking idiot. Oh, what a great fucking movie this idiot. was. Idiot. I'll put fucking this on. Idiot. Trying to go to sleep. I'll put on Boogie Nights. <laughs> All right, well. So, the walkover. We don't know what we're going to do with that for now. Yeah. Just relax. But uh, You know, uh, between now and March, I'm sure we'll do a few walkovers. Because it'll make sense. I think yeah. if it snows. But in general, we're not doing the walkover until uh, early March. If it snows, mm -hmm. people should pull you two along in toboggans. That'd be nice. Yeah. Hey, here's a guy that has fallen through the ice. Let's go here. All right. Uh, it's Hound from Pennsylvania. Hound. Hey. Hey. Yeah, I've fallen through ice. I know better. First, it feels like someone hits your entire body with a damn fly swatter, and then it just slowly becomes more painful. Well, how much... I was in... Wait, how does it What's feel that? like you've been hit by a fly swatter? I'm trying to understand Stinging? that Stinging? Like all of your body? Every... Yeah, your entire body just stings like you've been slapped. And then for about, I was in for about six minutes before I got pulled up Six out. minutes? And wow. What the hell were you doing? The backstroke? Well, um, numbly trying to yank myself out of a hole in the ice. How, how much air is between the water and the ice? How much, like, what do you have, about like I four in, inches? I was only in about oh my God, Rich. five and a half feet of water standing Holy on the Rich, bottom of the water. Rich thinks he was under the ice, like, oh my yeah, God. breathing in a little James Bond gap of Floating air. down the river, and your friends are running along, then no, they he see fell your, through your, the your blue face He fell the through ice. the ice, but he was still in the hole. Did like, you, oh, oh you your whole body wasn't immersed, God. right? You, you were, That's you were, what I was talking about. People that fall all the way in and go under. Well, he was holding oh, no, on I to the edge. up to, like, my neck. And Why you were holding you on to the edge, and you couldn't pull yourself out because it's the ice is slippery. He's wet. And I'm numb. You can't feel. You can't use your hands to hold You'll on. You lose like muscle forward. control really quickly. Oh, so, unbelievably! So how did you get saved? I had a couple of friends that were there with me, and they belly crawled out. I was only about ten feet out on a pond. So yeah. you were numb from the waist down. No, I was numb from the, my eyeballs down. I hit the when I went in. I was only in five and a half feet of water, so I was up about to my chin. But I mean, when it splashed me in the face, it knocked the wind out of me. Holy I couldn't shit. feel anything, and almost immediately, uh, you stiffen up. Your legs don't want to work. Your arms get tired. It's horrible. That's a good time to rape them. Yeah. <laughs> how how little did your dick get? <laughs> that must be severe shrinkage, man. Falling through the ice. I I'm pretty sure it came out the back. Well, mm -hmm. how, how, they got you out of the water. Then what did you do? Did you walk or did they drag you off the ice? No, we were, I was, uh, I was about 17. We were sled riding. They threw me on a sled and drug me to my house. I was covered in coats. They drug me back to the house and then ran a cold shower over me. Why cold shower? It, know what you have you to do? Not? Know what you have to do? I, I, I watched Man vs. Wild. Oh. Got to do push-ups. Really? Got to get your body temperature up. Yeah, you got to get the blood flowing. So what they I would think they you suggest, would want to keep your core temperature warm and not disperse it to your outer limbs. They suggest you do push-ups and stuff, get that heart pumping immediately. Are you shitting me? That's what Man vs. Wild taught me. Bad mm. time for calisthenics. Yeah, you don't feel like uh, doing it, but that's what... In the water. Just doing the doggy paddle. Right. <laughs> we want to do them in Honolulu, much less in five-degree weather. With <laughs> exactly. <covered> frozen liquid. <laughs> Wait, yeah, hold on a minute. Uh... The dumbness of Rich Voss amazes all of us, including Mike in Pennsylvania. <laughs> Mike, what's up? Hey, yeah, guys, I just wanted to know, did anyone notice that Rich thought there was four inches of space between the water and yeah. frozen? Well, how much, well, you don't think there's any space between no, the water? No, but you, like, you said it in such no, a way that you're a scientist and you've done your experiments and on the average there's four inches between the yeah, water about, and the ice. Yeah, there's about, yeah, how much, how much, uh, uh, Air, do you think how much distance between the water and the ice? I say, uh, Rich, the top the top layer freezes, so therefore <laughs> there it's like there shouldn't no. be any space. For the most part, there shouldn't be any space. There might be an air pocket somewhere, no, but there's, not, not for it. There's air between. But you said on the average, or like it's my studies have shown, I All think right, there is no space unless there's kind of an air bubble well, that I forms somewhere, but. I really don't think there's space under there. Uh, Back to Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Rich, anything? Yeah. When you're between the bottom of the frozen ice, okay. where the ice freezes, right? Okay. 
Then wait, the wait, water, wait. where it freezes. Where it freezes. Say there's six inches of ice frozen. Six yeah. inches of ice. Six inches of ice frozen. Okay. Frozen six inches of ice. Why would there be a space? Between the water. Between the water and the ice. And the bottom because of the ice. Because of expansion and ex detraction and expansion. <laughs> Holy fucking detraction <laughs> and expansion. Detraction. Yeah. Or whatever the other fucking word oh is. Oh, my <laughs> God. With, a, with an R. You're off by a lot of letters. De <laughs> detraction. You're, you're at the wrong side of the alphabet. Yes. Whatever. How does the you water... Do life you detract from it how does the last bit of water wow that's frozen on you know you said six inches of ice let's I say i would say six how six how does that last bit on the bottom of that six inches get frozen if the water isn't even touching it wait what <laughs> exactly here's the thing when the ice freezes the pond I don't know the scientific <laughs> terms, but the ice will rise. Wait, try. Ro now know. the ice, ice is will, going up. Right. It'll rise. Kind of like heat. Right. Kind of. Why don't you get any professor or anybody calm that knows? Down, calm any down. Any professor. Right. Take a deep breath. You're a scientist. All right. All right. Explain yourself. When the water freezes, All right. yeah. we got you Because there. if there wasn't a What's space... What's the temperature that water freezes Well, wait at? a second. Well, let's if, go with basics. The, the temperature is 32 below, below 32 freezing. Okay, if it didn't, there wasn't a space. Yeah, all the water would freeze. N no. How how come right. when it's only an inch of ice, mm -hmm. how could it build to be six inches if the water keeps pulling away from that block of ice? How does it get bigger than than a paper thin slice of ice? If when, right when the ice starts forming, it either rises from the water or the water goes away from it, regardless of what happens. How does then more ice form when there is nothing but air touching the bottom of that ice? It's hard for me to explain this having an anxiety attack that I've been <laughs> for, for about three hours now since I haven't slept last night. I'm having a major anxiety attack, almost turning. Take some Xanax. It's almost. At the point of a panic attack. Why? Uh, I don't know. Why are you panicking? I mean, you're, you're intelligently explaining the way ice no, will just kind of rise off the lake and give you a Wait, six you, feet of breathing listen, room. Listen, here's the thing. <laughs> all, all the... All the Everything you just know. Just say in this world. you saw it in True Lies at the beginning <laughs> when Arnold jumped in and swam for a while under I the ice. What movie did you see this in? Yeah. What movie? What movie what did movie you see this? What movie do you get under your scientific? The ice? Um, Dr. Voss. You know, everything. every time you know something, yeah. someone might have told you, you might have seen it, you might have read mm -hmm. it, right. but you don't always know the theories behind it. You just right. know it, right? An example of that yeah. would be what? Uh, I, I, uh, uh, like, you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. All right. You know, you know right now. You're a hell of a golfer, by the way. No, here's the thing. I just want to acknowledge Here's that. the thing. You know that... Uh, a certain types of food is good for you and bad for you, right? Uh -huh. But you never went to school for nutrition, but you know... <laughs> you know Obi just spit fucking you, his breakfast out through his nose. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, Not a word of it. Because you heard... You know, okay, when you go to the gym or you exercise, uh -huh. you know certain exercises are for certain parts of the body. You never took a, a course so on So you training. just know that so ice pulls away from water. I know. It, I, now, I think I know where Rich gets confused. In the winter, when puddles form uh, in, like, the dirt or something, yeah. it'll ice over. And then since it's not a, a permanent body of water, that water absorbs into the ground and leaves a layer of ice that's fun to, like, step in and go... <laughs> and crack. You ever step on a yeah, thin a layer of ice? I think that's where Rich is getting confused. No, How about no. this? Bottom of the ice surface melting because the water's a little warmer than the ice. Well, it would still be Making adding the space. water. There. That could be it. But yeah. it would be adding the water back to the to the lake. Wait. Here's the bottom line. I'm right. I just don't know why I'm right. <laughs> okay, is that good enough? You no. know, if you're trying to if you're trying to bang a girl and you got all the right answers, that's all that matters. All I need is to look up at the phones and see right. science teacher, comma, Voss is an idiot. <laughs> Frank, Frank from Chicago, nah, a very familiar city with ice, and you're a science teacher. Yes, it's uh, Ryan because uh, oh Ryan, Ross is an idiot. It's uh, there's no air between the water frozen.
water, uh, the, fro- the ice and the fr- frozen water being ice. Idiots, ice you're hun- first of all, you're 100 percent wrong because so many times kids fall into the ice, get sucked under, and they hold their head up between the water and the ice and breathe and turtle pull down. What out. movie is this? I this just doesn't oh, happen. The, the Omen Two. The Omen Two. They grab an axe and try no. to get him out. If a kid goes into the ice, yeah, he breaks through the ice, yes, and isn't in the hole that he fell through, yeah. and moves under the ice, yes, he's, he's a dead his... kid. He is not. Oh. You find me one case where a kid fell through the ice, was washed down away from the hole he fell through, uh-huh. and without any other fucking hole, he's breathing until help comes or or whatever. There's no he. The kid fucking drowns, and is dead. I could be wrong, but I don't think I am. I'm pretty sure that because I saw it somewhere where they hold their head <sighs> like that. In a movie, like a little, it's, a, uh, it's called a movie. Well, okay, even if it's a movie, to make the ice, you still have to have that separation between it. But that could be anything. It could be uh, air yeah. being released from the bottom somewhere and making a pocket. There could be pockets. And this science teacher, he had no proof. He just goes, you're an idiot. What's Where's his proof? He's a science My teacher. Proof that five million people listening agree with him. <laughs> My proof is this. Yeah, five What's million that? people. I'd um, be wrong. Ryan. No, my proof is this. Jimmy, where are you performing on Thursday night? Chicago. Oh, see? Improv. In Chicago? No, Chicago. Zany. Yeah. Zany's in oh, Chicago. Oh, Zany, Zany, Zany. That's Chicago. the important part. Thank you. <laughs> Ryan from uh, Chicago. Yeah, Ryan. Chicago. Ryan, do us yeah. a favor and listen to the show on WCKG, all right? We can use the help. I will do it. I will do it. All right, listen on WCKG and then maybe listen to the second half. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge on XM Satellite Radio. Do you understand what I'm saying, people? I've been doing it. The Fatty Pig Fatty, I showed some of uh, the guys in the, my office here, and they're huge fans already. So all right, cool. They love the video. All right, thank, thank you, you, sir. I'll see you. All right, let's go to Bye. Eric the Trucker. He does some ice fishing. Eric, what's up? Hey, guys. Hey. Gosh, you're an idiot. Oh, I guess I might be wrong on this Anthony's one, too. Anthony's right. When you punch a hole in a lake or a pond, the water levels even with the top of the ice. I just got back last night from a three-day ice fishing trip. So there's we no go space. Every year. There's no space. There's, there's no space. Not even. Uh, when, uh, you punch, when you punch a hole in a lake or a pond, the water rises right to the top edge level with the top of the ice. There is no space. So what do yeah, you do to keep yourself sense. from falling in? Like, you guys have like a, a place you'll find on the ice that's really solid you should nail something in and tie a rope around that and then tie the other rope to yourself so if you fall in you only travel a little there bit there are little like they make little cabins yeah, yeah. there are little yeah. cabins that that's they what? sit in they take drills Jimmy yeah, so the, the ice is really oh, yeah. thick where they go they ice have fishing. fires in the cabins yeah. on the ice where are yeah. the cabins it's like make, a, oh, it's almost like an outhouse. They're real they make, small. Yeah, they make little oh. outhouses, and it's got no floor, or sometimes it's got a little bit of a floor with a hole in it. And then you you take an auger and drill a hole, and then you drop your lines in, and you're ice fishing, and it's warm. Drinking and beer. Some they, people yeah. bring TVs yeah. and they make little fires in their uh, area. But what if you what like if you fall through? Like you say you miscalculate horribly. Jimmy, they drive uh, trucks onto the ice. Yeah. Yeah. I do believe the ice people is so probably thick. have fallen through. Idiots, they call I'm them. I'm sure maybe they do something like you're saying, just in case. Yeah. But but the, these the ice fishermen, they're they're driving their big, huge, you know, pickup trucks and stuff on the ice to set up their little uh, area for How ice fishing. How do you fishing. test it? It's, it's, test it's, what? It's yeah. in Minnesota. The ice? It's, it's oh, a, they know. It's a, it's in these areas where the ice is just, you know, a couple feet thick and the entire winter. Someone said with Rich's theory of that, that space, when the first person drills a hole in the ice, all that air pressure that's between the water and the bottom of the ice would be released, and the ice would then slip down to the level of the water. Like, <laughs> you're releasing all that compressed air that's between the ice and the water. Right. All right, so this is one of the topics I won't talk about Saturday. All but right. But here's the thing. Oh, yeah, Rich Boss that's is a- doing a show Saturday right here on 202. Nice. nice. Yeah, 12. Rich and Bob, uh, yeah. All right. I, I, okay. Good much, boys. Uh, I got to answer uh, Bill from Philly. Yes, it helped greatly. Thank you, Bill. Bill knows what to do. Thank you, Bill Klein. Uh, other people want to call Rich Voss and ask. Ken in Jersey, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Ken, you there? Jersey. Voss is an ass. He couldn't wait around to call you an ass. No. Oh, well. Uh, let's go to Ed in South Dakota. Ed, what's up? Uh, I've fallen through the ice, and it was. I had waders on at the time, and the ice was two inches above my waders. So that 
ice and cold water slowly oh. poured into my waders. Poured into your waders. Big hip boot things. Yeah. And and oh. filled filled up your legs with icy water. And now you're and weighed only, down. Now you're a lot heavier in the uh, the icy water. As you try to pull yourself out, you, it's going to weigh you down. I'm just pounding thinking about this. Did you go completely I had under? to break ice for about 20... No, my chest and head were out of the water. So you worked like an icebreaker and walked out? Yep. Making like a, a swath of I broken cannot... ice instead of trying to pull yourself out. How long did it take you? 15 minutes. Did you completely think you were dead? Oh, I thought I was a goner. I was by myself, a mile from anything. Nobody else around. Did it go instantly, or did you hear that <laughs> start cracking? Yeah, I got to hear a couple of cracks, oh. and it popped. And what did you just go, and oh, fuck, I'm, I'm fucked. <laughs> oh, that sucks. Did you tip yeah. the waiters? Well, here's the first thing. When I finally got oh, on top waiters. of the ice, Ugh. all the way, all the water and ice poured down the back of my neck poured out of the waders and onto my head. Oh, because you had and to, like, lift your legs up? About it. Right, right. I had to lift my legs up, and I'm laying there. It was, fortunately, it was about 40 degrees, so it wasn't terribly cold. Oh, wow. Hey, someone from their cell phone really fast, uh, going with Rich's logic, uh, they're they're asking the questions, uh, the question, so, puddles float in the air? Hmm. It's too deep for me. I don't know. What it's, <laughs> yeah. it's too yeah, far. It <laughs> you are brilliant as far as this radio show this goes. This team right? chick you beating. Are, you are perfect. Uh, Ed, that's. Uh, but oh, there's the chick. The news can't get enough of playing it and telling everyone how awful it is. But I've seen it. So I've seen this clip. It has to be a dozen times this morning. Is so, this racial? Or like, is, no, is it no, girl no, white I or think black? There's or? a black girl also pops in, but white girls are hitting. It's nice to see uh, the races working yeah, they get, together. They're working together. It's, 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 so it's a massive cat fight with hair pulling and kicking and Maybe punching. See, there goes a black oh, girl. Stomping a white. You know what? Three on one. It's just They're just animals. And the family's suing because some kid threw this up on YouTube. Who's uh? Well, why What's did he that? Poor little chubby. They're suing the kids Hispanic that put the, the video up on YouTube, and not kids that. Well, I'm sure they're suing the kids that uh, beat oh, their the child. Oh, the hair pulling. Why are they beating her up? Oh, look at them! I hope uh, they get hit by cars because well, it was did, Tuesday. Right. Uh, you know why? What do you mean they're animals? What, like, what this is just this shit happened all the time. Let's think, not, let's right. not fucking. Uh, uh, well, this is think the, anything different. But this, this shit is, always happened. But this is one of the the, the new rages as far as uh, the, the, you know the YouTube videos go. Well, I know, Getting but these up on on uh, YouTube. But we didn't always have video capable cell phones and YouTube. Right. But beatings like this and shit always happen every day. Oh. People, you know, chicks would beat the shit out of each other. And guys would beat the shit out of each other. And, and this would just go, she would go home, yell, uh, cry to her mother. The parents might get called. Something had happened. But now, it, you know, somebody grabs their camera phone, it ends up on YouTube. Yeah. They can't stop showing it on CNN. No, they, they just showed it three times in a row. Nothing was better than seeing, like, two girls fight in high school. Chick a fights. Cat fight out of nowhere. Are was great. The, yeah. one Everyone the, would just one yell. One of the greatest things to see. Cat fight. Cat fight. And you run out and just watch handfuls of hair and and The scratching. amount of hair they would pull out of each other's heads. But black chicks used to box. I mean, like, at my <laughs> oh, wow. school, there were black chicks in my school that were so tough. That's where they, the, the conversation dudes. ends for me. There were black chicks in my school. I... They weren't. In Plainfield, let me tell you, and these girls would throw down. Like, you knew some could kick your ass. Yeah. So, like, you you watched a fight, but you stayed away because you didn't want to. What are you looking at? You know, nothing. Uh, what a coward. Not a coward. These girls were Shut tough up. in Plainfield. Uh, the, it, it, in my school, uh, like high school and stuff, like three black kids, they were all in drama class. It was you know, nothing to worry about. But uh, Central Islip, I went to Central Islip Elementary School. So. Again, a lot of them were younger. It was before any real violence would perk up in anyone's head. But there were a couple of big black guys in there that just used to come up and go, Yo, man, give me 50 cent. Give me 50 cent. And, you know, you dig in, give them a couple of quarters, smile, and walk away. It was like paying a life toll. When we, it, My school was mainly black. One day we were walking home from school, and I knew all the dudes. You know, I sold them pot, and I grew up in that neighborhood. Good man. So I'm walking down the street with Mickey. It's like 75, 80 degrees, and one guy goes, is that the guy that threw ice at us yesterday? I go, yeah. Pow. 
blood just started pouring out of his face. And they look at me and they go, he's cool. So, like, my friend is laying down. Why don't you help him? I did. I carried him to the store to get the blood wiped off his face. You should have stuck up for him and said, hey. And then throw no, uh, I said some he's cool. I, I said he's cool. He didn't throw ice. And they, oh, they just. It's too late. Bam. You know, they were just. They used to carry. This is in 70. In like 73, 74. They used to carry guns to school back then. And, you know, and they would just terrorize you. <laughs> like, one dude, Carlos, was just ruthless. And he got. He was. We were in front of the store. He was standing in front of the store. He just got out of jail. And 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 we go. What's up, Carlos? He goes the same old thing, and you just had to hand him what you had in your pocket, like the same old. I'm still taking your shit. Oh, it was just like no, just and you like kind of yeah. There were a couple of those guys. That's yeah. what I'm talking about. And you knew that like if they asked you for change, you didn't ask questions. You didn't yeah. go like, hey, but I need that or something. You just uh, dug in your pocket like, you and go. gave this kid. It was uh, Tyrone. His name yeah. was, and you just gave him your, your fifty cents. So every day. You had to make sure you had 50 cents on you above and beyond anything else that you wanted that day because 50 cents was going to him. We were at a basketball game. I remember, game. Uh, I, remember I, 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 I didn't get extorted, but there was a kid I wanted to be friends with named Billy. He was older than me, Billy Archer. And I was like in third, like seventh grade. He was like an eighth. I thought he was cool. And I remember one time he asked me uh, like if I had a dime. Or if he asked me for a nickel. He's like, you got a nickel? And I gave him a dime. And I'm like, you don't have to pay me back. <laughs> Like I feel like, oh, <laughs> oh, what a tool. Hey, uh, we got to back up just slightly. Rob and Cleveland. Keep the change. Yeah. Dude. Easy come, easy, easy go. go Rob. I had it, and I went with it. Uh, Rob, what's up? Hey, I just wanted to say that Rich Voss is thinking of Sylvester Stallone and Cliffhanger when he gets caught on the ice yeah. for like 10 minutes. Yeah, you're oh. confusing fantasy world movie things with, with real life. Well, how did I know it wasn't real? <laughs> Uh, because the credits at the end. Of the movie. <laughs> yeah, really. Because the guy that was the cliffhanger guy was also a boxer in a movie, and a Rambo. cop in another one, and, and Rambo. And, and he was really good at arm wrestling. And yeah. <laughs> we were he a, played soccer once. Uh, <laughs> Still Getty was his mom. Right. Yeah. Well. We were at a, a basketball game in high school, and like an 11th grader, <laughs> the cops come in, handcuff him, and just take him out. And as he's walking out, this 11th grader, he goes, Call my mom's, call my lawyer. Who has a, a lawyer? <laughs> a, in a lawyer. Grade. Grade. <laughs> oh, that is and great. I got a lawyer. Call my mom's, call my... And then there was these dudes from the West... It was East End and West End, and West End was really tough. And there was this one dude, Earl. If you owed him money, Ooh. he was a gangster of gangsters. If you owed him money, he would take you to Greenbrook Park, beat you up, take off all your clothes, and make you swim and walk home. And they would throw you in the lake. After they beat you up well, and you have nice. to walk home naked, so you always paid him for his drugs. It was just ruthless, ruthless people. Hey, it's so not that ruthless. Yeah, to be honest with you. That's ruthless. Not. Pay for your fucking drugs. I mean, yeah. Colombians well, kill your family and give you a necktie. This guy just yeah. threw well, this in the is lake. High school. Yeah, they mail your, those are shenanigans. They mail your oh. skull back to your family. <laughs> hey, uh, Doug from Jersey says uh, Plainfield High School is so much worse now. Oh, Rich, take this phone call. I gotta take a leak. All right, go ahead, oh. Doug. Doug, you're on the air with uh, Rich Voss. Doug. Yeah, yeah, yeah here you John. go. Hello? It's John. Whatever your fucking oh name is, just, I leak. just I speak. Leak. John, are you, from yeah. Play are you from Plainfield? Yeah, I am. And you go to Plainfield uh, High? Uh, not anymore. I graduated in 97. Let me tell you what. He ain't lying. It's, it's murder over there. Wait, are you white or black? White. So you were the <laughs> only... Him. Well, no, because if the black people... Wait a minute. If the black guys from Plainfield sounded like this, it's not a tough school. Well, there's always one that's a Republican. No, there isn't. <laughs> now you there were three white kids in my graduating class, and uh, we got beat up almost every day. And there was only three graduators that year. <laughs> uh, <laughs> were the black kids seven. racial to you? Um, yeah. You, you used to make us wear white T-shirts. It was horrible. Now, you lived in the East End or the West End? East End. See, it was the West End as brutal as anywhere? It's like a combat zone, right? Oh, yeah. You go anywhere near Greenberg Park, you were getting robbed, shot, stabbed. Unbelievable. It was like this in the 70s, but it's got to be brutal now. I mean, the school is just... Well, even then, like you were it's saying, horrible. that they would they would bring guns to school. Uh, like, yeah, it was Then, though, a lot that. of it was solved by just punching, you know, uh, black guy uh, asked, asked for money in, in the school I'm talking about. Uh, Francis J. O'Neill Elementary School. Uh, if you didn't give him the money, you would be punched in the face. Uh, but that's it, you know? Uh -huh. 
Now you look at somebody the wrong way, you step on someone's foot and don't fucking beg for forgiveness. Uh, you get stabbed or shot in the bathroom or something like God that. God forbid you put a mark on someone's new sneakers. Yeah, oh boy. And they must have yeah. tons of security guards in the school now, right? Oh, yeah, metal detectors everything. They just shave down plastic and carry plastic blades. Oh, Jesus. You know the, you know the heater by the... Uh, I guess it's over by Stella Avenue, outside the heater the out there. Heater? That you yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. where you used to cut school. Like I, instead of going to class in this type of weather, I would just stand under the heater, that blue heater out, smoke pot, and sell nickel bags to the black dudes that walk by. There was a heater outside. It was a vent that blew heat out. How did everybody not know that everybody was selling drugs by that nice warm spot outside? Yeah, that's where you you went and cut. And no the school heater. official did anything. It, there wasn't as many back then. Security guards it was like two when they I. They don't realized. do anything now. <laughs> They're uh, just happy they survived the week. Is, is it? And there's got to be. Went, got another here. paycheck. Whoop a dee doo. Is it like Crips and Bloods now in in Plainfield? Some real, some fake. It's it's crazy. Who we, by the way, as the Opie and Anthony show, have no preference. Neither. Yeah. Either is fine by us. Yeah, I think they're just getting together as friends and just. Whatever you, whatever they have to do. All right, Doug. Get along. Way to be PC, boys. Take it easy. All right, listen. We got uh, we got Sean from Michigan. We really want to move on because we got uh, we got uh, Dee Dee's basement. We want to play that today. A little of that. We got this serial buttocks grabber from Florida. <laughs> we got news bloopers. Uh, I found um, uh, Borat's acceptance speech from. Oh uh, yeah, I didn't hear that from the Golden Globes. This thing was hilarious. Oh, I want to play one more. Oh, it's beyond funny. I think. Uh, but first, we got so Sean Michigan. It's not funny. It beyond overshot funny. the runway oh, yeah, of I funny. Guess you're right. I guess you're right. Yeah. You know, there is a six-inch gap between funny <laughs> and beyond funny. <laughs> it, and it lives somewhere in there. <laughs> oh, okay. It's hovering <laughs> over funny. If you drilled a hole in beyond funny, <laughs> right. would there be a gap before you got to funny? Because I know beyond funny seems to lift up a bit. <laughs> You have to go through mundane to uh, get some funny, I guess. Yeah. Did he make the speech as Cohen or as uh, Borat? As Cohen. Okay. That's good. Let me. Uh, glad he didn't. Let's say hi to Sean in Michigan. Yeah. Sean. Hey, how's it going, guys? All hey. right. You know, Rich is right for in a little way. He doesn't know why he's right, though. All right. Uh, Northern Northern Michigan is cold all the time. If you're on a lake that doesn't change levels very often. No, you're not going to have a gap. But if it's a reservoir and they can control the level of that water, you're damn right. You drive, you drill through that ice. And I've done this when my truck's been on the ice. You drill through and air comes up and you go, shit, and you get the hell off the lake. Yeah, see, that's what I meant. Michigan. I, I forgot oh, to leave out Michigan. Oh, Michigan, right. Yeah. Well, a reservoir, yeah, I guess that would the level might change. Uh, it does. It does. Sure it, changes, it changes a lot if that ice is thick enough, man. The ice stays where it is in the center. And, of course, it hits the sides of the lake. It's, if, if it's a smaller reservoir, man, you drill through and nothing but air comes out, get the hell off. And, I, and that's what I'm saying. Anything with a current under the ice, the level that's will right. drop. No, not, not necessarily a river. Current. The river ain't going to do that. Well, yeah, yeah, it won't. You know, if they can regulate the level of that water, be careful on a reservoir, man. Can, we, can we finish up the fluid dynamics with Professor Voss yeah, segment Voss. of the program? Before we lose every single listener out there. <laughs> like, he was right. He just didn't know why. As we speak, fe people are falling through the ice. <laughs> the thin ice that yeah. is called this radio show. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Falling to other stations that yeah. are six inches below our show. <laughs> <Right>. My God. <laughs> we might have to kill someone to get everyone back listening to this program, Rich. It seems to work if you could write it out. But Jesus. Yeah, MSNBC uh, just did a huge story on uh, the morning rave being fired. All right, should we take a break and then uh, get yeah, into let's this other stuff? Do that, and uh, I want to hear uh, Sasha. Uh, Sasha. Okay, and the cereal buttocks. It's a cereal buttocks thing I've heard nothing about. It sounds cute. Dee Dee's basement. I might not even want to hear that crap. <laughs> News bloopers is a quickie, and what? Jim Norton, 1993 governor set. No, <laughs> stop! Oh, you Holy do that shit! Come on! No, you gotta no, do no, that wait, with wait, Patrice wait, wait, wait. and Colin here. If they have, if that's the same one we did at NEW, it's not the one I was gonna bring. That governor set. That's not a. Yeah, I was. I thought you were bringing in a new I one. I forgot today, but that's from a TV. I want, is, that's probably is this, the Rascal set. 
Here, well, whoever is brought it? this in, come on in and explain yourself. And explain yourself. It's so not you can like get Jimmy beaten. is trying to get out of it, but no. he would rather have I want like, better audio. He wants uh, he wants crystal clear audio. All right, we're gonna regroup. We'll continue in just a bit with Rich Voss, who's doing a show on two o two this Saturday with his lovely wife uh, Bonnie. Right, nine to twelve. All right. Hey, oh, Cunningham, I'm gay. I just bought mouth. He said sit on it, so I did. Obi and Anthony. All right, we're going to officially start the XM portion of the Opie and Anthony show. <laughs> now that the walkover is over and the uh, the bullshitting with uh, Rich Voss is done. No more ice talk, all right, Rich? Promise us. Oh, I'm done. All right. Will you be taking science questions on Saturday? I, I don't think that's going to work. I'm going to try Maybe. to set you up to fail. Uh, if you're oh. going to listen to Rich Voss on Saturday on 202, at, you know, ask him a science question, all right? <laughs> what were you going to say before break? Do I think what? Were you going to smash me? Or no, something? just do you think. Oh. <laughs> That's what I said. Do you think? No. That was the joke. <laughs> Very good, Anthony. Uh, yeah, Borat's uh, acceptance uh, speech from the Golden Globes. Oh, that was it. Yeah. Sasha. And we're, you just saw the movie for the first time very recently. Yeah, recently, and I was a little bummed that I didn't see it sooner. And what part did you really, really like? I thought the part where he uh, has to stay at the Jewish people's house was your favorite part of the movie. Hysterical. Is that your favorite part of the funny uh, part? The, that was probably my favorite part because it was just so politically incorrect and wrong. Then the other thing was the disgusting favorite part, which I don't know how the hell he. All right, because that was my favorite part, and, and and that was way more wrong than any other scene in the movie. When he thought that the Jews could had the power to shape shift and had shape shifted into cockroaches and crawled under his door bedroom door and he was fending them off by throwing money at the cockroaches. <laughs> <laughs> I found that hysterical. Other than the balls and the asshole no, in his face. That was funny in one of the most disgusting ways I've ever laughed. There's never been a more disgusting scene filmed. A fat, hairy man. Right. He goes uh, 300 pounds. Yeah. 300 plus. Is sitting on Sasha's face. Yeah. And, and his balls and asshole is right in his face. His his face is buried in this guy's taint and ass crack. And I'm like, this, this, this is a cheap budget movie. This isn't CGI. <laughs> they didn't green screen this guy into this guy's fucking asshole. What was the guy wearing? Nothing. Nothing. They were both okay. completely Com naked. They're both completely <laughs> naked. Jimmy. And this fat, hairy man... Oh. Barry, you can't imagine how far up Borat's face was in this guy's ass crack. Oh, he can imagine. <laughs> Why? Yeah. They were fighting. They were, they were fighting yeah. in a hotel room. And they were completely naked. And then the fight spilled out to the uh, the hallway, the elevator. And then they ran into some kind of like... Uh, a convention. A like a like real downstairs. estate convention or something that was happening at the hotel. Chasing now they're, each they're other. They're chasing each other through the convention, fighting completely naked. How come you, you haven't seen this movie yet? Why? It's worth seeing, dude. It's funny. It love really it. is. You don't it. think the, with the part with the lady, the woman who lives, where he was sitting being interviewed? Oh, yeah. Just God. pissing off yeah, the, the women woman, livers. The woman lives. <laughs> Yeah, the women libs. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> the women the libs. women's liberation movement. The women, women ad libs. <laughs> hey, uh, Boots from Jersey. Hey, boys. Two things. Ask Voss what temperature water freezes. He said 32 below. No, 32 below. 32. He said below 32. I said it below. Could, it could also freeze at 32. That's t technical. Yeah, all right. I, would, uh, I wouldn't call and that. And then he also. Degree. And then he also writes, and I believe Opie referred to Colombians. Emailing a skull to the family, and then he oh, just, email, and then he just writes, "Brilliant." That would be scary. Ooh, it's an email from some Colombian. <laughs> Ooh, it's a skull. Pop up. Right. Necktie dot com. <laughs> uh, let's go to Jonathan in Jersey. Jonathan, what's going on? Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey, Jonathan. Just uh, calling to uh, let Anthony know that uh, I think he's missing the whole point of the whole Borat movie. Funny movie. But, uh, you know, making fun of the Jews, making fun of the women, he, uh, 
he's kind of making fun of the other countries, the smaller countries in the world. Really? How ignorant they are. Yeah. I didn't even fucking get that. I just thought it was like a candid camera movie. I didn't get the irony or anything, because I'm a fucking uh, retard, Jonathan. Thanks for filling me in. I love you guys in Jersey. Thank you. I'm from Thank Long you. Island. I'm stupid too, Jonathan. All right. Uh, well, with that. What an idiot! He's not getting away with that. Whatever. Of course, I saw that and I knew what the fuck the movie's about. Jesus Christ! <laughs> well, maybe he helped me. Oh, okay. All right. With that said, here's <laughs> Borat accepting his uh, his Golden Globe the other night. Actually, Sasha. Warren, where is he? It's Wawa Wawa. Uh, I want to thank the Hollywood Foreign Press, uh, and I just want to say this movie was a life-changing experience. I saw some amazing, beautiful, invigorating parts of America, but I saw some dark parts of America, an ugly side of America, a side of America that rarely sees the light of day. Who's this guy? <laughs> I refer, of course, to the anus and testicles of my co-star, Ken Devishu. <laughs> And you can see anus and testicles on primetime television? As long as you don't talk about shoving your testicles in the man's anus. Really? Well, listen. Oh, yeah? Goes, yeah. Mm -hmm. You you tell me how he got away with this. And we can't, this network? And I bet you we I bet you we couldn't play this on uh, the no, other I'll side push, of the Opie and Anthony show couldn't. today. Oh, they're loving him. Ken, as I, when I was in that scene, and I stared down and saw your two wrinkled golden globes on my chin, I thought to myself, I'd better win a bloody award for this. And then when my 300-pound co-star decided to sit on my face and squeeze the oxygen from my lungs, I was faced with a choice. Death or to breathe in the air. From, to breathe in the air that had been trapped in a small pocket between his buttocks for 30 years. <laughs> Kenneth, if it was not for that rancid bubble, I would not be here today. Thank you to Larry Charles. Thank you to Jay Roach. And then, you know, whatever. and then they gave him yeah. the music, huh? Yeah. Wow. And he thanks him. They people. gave him to get the fuck out of here music. How the hell did he get away with that? <laughs> yep. He wow. talked around it, sure, but come on. Yes. His come balls on. on the chin, pretty much. Yeah, balls but on the chin. Asshole and, and yeah, nose in your ass. By the way, something very funny happened while that clip was playing. Um, Voss was attempting to eat, what, a bagel or something? Brand muffin. A brand muffin. Oh, no. And he had it all laid out nice in front of him. It's and maybe foil. you heard in the background as you're listening to that clip this sound. That was Norton's fist <laughs> pummeling the muffin in front of Rich Boss. Why did I eyes. miss I, that? I just gently pulled it back and pushed it. Did they get to muffin. see that on Pal Talk? Let me see the muffin. I fucking love when he does that. Did they did they get to see that on Pal Talk? Oh, I don't Talk? even know. I couldn't yeah. turn up because he was. I hope so. All All right. Right. Is, is, is it still a flat? <laughs> Look, it's, you can kind of see. It looks like it an was... English muffin now. <laughs> it looks like, a, looks like a toasted English muffin. He's the most anal person when you mess with his food. scumbag. Oh, he'll yell and scream at you. There's your, there's your I was still going to eat it. Were you? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> laying, it out, laying it out all nice, oh, yeah. getting ready. I look to get forward into that to that. Goodness. I know, I can see it. I earned that muffin. <laughs> <laughs> it was farting on it. Uh, hey, it was still on it. There was six inches between his hand and that muffin. <laughs> that is really That's funny. Perfectly good. <laughs> Soft muffin. <laughs> All right. What did he win for? Best comedy or best comedy actor? Yeah, yeah exactly.
Best comedy. He won for best drama. Yeah, right. No, there's <laughs> odd fuck to me. Best special effects. What you, no, 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 I'm no, answering him like, yeah, you know, that, that was, yeah, you're right on that one. But here's of the course. thing. Here's the thing. Cause best lighting. The best gold, adapted screenplay. <laughs> the, gold, <laughs> the, the Golden Globes. Best costume. I'm, here's the thing. The Golden Globes is a key to who might win the Oscar. Is it? I with the king of <laughs> Oh, I Not hate this me. fat cunt. Not Duke. Why? Who is that? She was on American Idol last night. Ew. Big, fat, like, you could tell she's the life of the party. Everyone loves her at the office. She's the funny one. No, she, no, not even that. She's just the fun, fat friend. Yeah, fun, fat friend. And she came in to American Idol to audition <laughs> and sang... <laughs> what she thought sounded like the cowardly lion. You know what a fun, that's not a fun fat friend. You know what a fun <laughs> friend, <laughs> what a fat friend know. does? Oh, uh, what, Jim? <laughs> when you're out at a restaurant and you go, all right, do that thing I like. And they go, yeah. And you go, yeah. And they take off their clothes and they crawl around on the restaurant floor and make piggy noises. <laughs> <laughs> that is a fun fat While friend. people are eating. <laughs> <laughs> and you get to throw pats of butter on her ass. <laughs> if I were the king of us, not queen, not duke, not prince, on my regal robes of us, would be a satin, but not cotton, but not chintz. I command everything be a fish or fall with us. <laughs> and the royal growl. Oh, oh f mm. fuck. <laughs> cowardly uh, elephant. Yeah. <laughs> well, Simon, uh, any comments? But what am I supposed to say? I'm yeah. unique. I am, like, the no, most different not, that has ever been on the show. Like, I broad. have something that no one can bring, and I have, like, range that... Uh, it was one of the strangest auditions I've ever heard in my life. That's a yes or no? No. Paula? No. Jewel? No. That's no to Hollywood. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Do you guys want the poster? Not ready. Mm. No. She, she made a poster for them. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait for the Tin Man. I'm going to call the Tin Man right now. There you go. I like the fact, though, that Simon didn't play into it and give her fun. He just went to strange audition. No? Yeah. No. 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 Be no. Done. Leave. Out, fatso. Yeah, your little gimmick. Exactly. Hey, you guys were talking about um, Jason the Juggler. I, I didn't get to see Jason because I went to bed. I, I saw Simon. I made it to around 9.30. He had those dopey sticks. Ugh. You ever see the sticks? There's two sticks, a total of three. Can, two can sticks I you hold. I'm, I'm you. sorry. I interrupted you too much on the show. I understand, but on the instant feedback, it's perfect. Bird from Philly, she's singing Frunkus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry, Ed. Anyway, this... I were the king of the Frunkus. <laughs> That's the lie. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so there's the... The sticks? The yeah, the sticks. three sticks. You hold two of them, and one of them you, you know, bang around, and it flips around, and you kind of keep it in the air with the other two sticks. Some lame fucking... It's a hippie sport. Yeah. They're called devil sticks. Just for Devil them. sticks, man. What happened to the hacky sack? <laughs> devil sticks. I got my devil sticks and my fish tapes, man. So he went into audition, and he's flipping around, you know, his stick, and he's... Uh, uh, singing but not really he's just kind of talking his way through something mm -hmm. and it's awful and he walks out of there so upset and pissed off that he didn't get picked <laughs> like he, he there's no way you would pick this guy for anything well <laughs> and you were at the cellar laughing even though you weren't I, I listening to the sound I could, yeah, the cellar they have the tvs up in the bar and you can you kind of read the uh, printout what's it called the uh closed caption yeah, yeah. And it was, I don't know why it made me laugh, because he was crying so hard, and they just go to Simon, and you can see, he goes, he took that well, and I don't know why, it just made me laugh. <laughs> I just knew they must have shit on him, and I missed it. Oh, yeah, they did. <laughs> Frunkus. Frunkus. Well, Jason was here with his props. Counting every moment, biding all my time. I'm standing out here on my own. <laughs> I'm searching for that someone to heal this heart of mine And keep me from being <laughs> alone But when will it be? Oh, oh. And how will I know? I don't want to wait here forever Somebody 
really want me the way I've always dreamed it could All right, be. All Jason, oh. you have just summed up Minneapolis, mate. Oh. Hmm? That just sums up the day. Useless at everything. I mean, even the juggling was pathetic. <laughs> no, um, I can actually juggle really well if you want me to. All right, let's well, see no. the real juggling. Okay. I, All right, Jason. All right. He dropped okay. one. You know, I got to say something here. I mean, Paula. Yeah? I kind of feel Jason happened into the wrong show. I was going to just say that. Maybe he should be. There's a show, Paula, have you heard of it, Jewel? It's called America's yeah. Got Some Talent. <laughs> Okay, yeah. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Randy, yes or no? No for Idol, yes for America's Got Talent, if I should be so bold. Yeah. Jewel. Yeah. No. Paula. Definitely America's Got Talent. <coughs> it's a no. <laughs> Sorry, your future involves not singing. So then what happened? Uh, then he walks out and, just... and uh, he loses his mind. Well, how old is he? 16. He's like 16. Is there a golden ticket in your boy's hand who's never sung for you before? Them. Oh. Those <laughs> son of a <laughs> cut me off. They said I couldn't sing. They said I was perfect for juggling, could dance. Paula, oh my gosh, she was just so drugged out. Rude. In her face from me. <laughs> I could tell they hated me. It's okay. they, they were on the guy tried to fuck back and everything. <laughs> They've been so insulted in my life. Oh. They said I sum up Minneapolis. They say Minneapolis has no talent because of me. <laughs> That made me laugh. No way. No. Why don't you worry about it? Jason, you're 16 years old. Jason, you're 16. You got a lot. 16 years old. I wanted to start out famous. They blew me off. You're going to be famous. You're going to be famous. That's what it's about today. Okay. You're going to be famous. He's a douche. He's going to fucking kill his high school. So you have no problem with that. To be famous. No, no, no. You have no problem with that crime, but you had problem with Jessica crime. To me, a real sadness. That started off the show last night. Okay. To me, there's a real sadness in that. This kid was a little bit, to me, spoiled and obnoxious. That seems obnoxious to me. Yeah. Like, uh, to be juggling. And it's like, at least the other girl, the audio I really didn't hear. Because I took the headphones off. Um, wow, it disturbed you. Jimmy could not handle it. I couldn't take it. I couldn't take it. No, I took my Ugh. Plus, he's a prop act. Everybody knows American Idol is for singing. Act. Nobody's yeah. coming there and juggling yeah. and doing magic tricks. No. Well, that's you to know. get you in the door. It's They're doing thing. little things to get the it's attention stupid. of the judges. Stupid. I got to play... Uh, it's a little long, but this was my favorite part of American Idol last night. The girl that was trying to figure out, work out the song Kiss by Prince. Yeah. Live in front of him. If you show up, perhaps you should know the words to uh, the song Did you're you doing. you hear this? I'm sure she just forgot them. Oh, that, she was the best. No, uh, but uh, she forgot all of them. She got nervous. She but blacked she out. But she stayed focused and, and just hung in there. She got and, scared. And you at home, you're waiting for her to just get to the, the hook, which is, I just want your... Blah, 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 and your... Yeah. Da, 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 kiss. Prince is that all you want to hear? No. No. Oh. But she was singing that song. Is that the one that danced on the floor and stuff? She was snapping so a lot. Yeah. Well, snapping her fingers listen and dancing. It gets funnier as it goes along. Women, no girls. I want no yeah. women, no girls. Oh. <laughs> I want women, not no girls. I want women, not no girls. Oh, my God. I'm so... She's hanging in there. She's working. It Women, out. not right. girls. They rule my world. Yes, they rule my world. God. Oh my gosh. I was actually rooting for her last night. Like, no come girls. on, you could do it. They rule my world. Come on. Oh, yes, they rule my world. Yeah. Don't need shoes and time. <laughs> so uncomfortable. It's just whispering. No women, I want girls. I don't want no girls, cause they rule my world. Yeah. Women, cause she rule my world. Oh god. <laughs> oh god. Oh god. <laughs> How she snap her fingers with no thumb? <laughs> it's like hearing somebody trying to sing along with the radio without the radio. You know, yeah, just get yeah. quiet in the pub. Yeah. You don't know. Yeah, when you don't know, and just. <laughs> but you have. 
She was dancing and moving and yeah, like, trying to cover like, up for the fact that no, she didn't know she the words. She was just trying to work it out, man. It, she 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 knew. I she, know this song. I know, I know it. <laughs> I know this. But I the, know it. I sing it on the radio when it's on a, in the car. I know it. We're not even halfway done. Uh, it's, it's so I'm, uncomfortable. And I'm at home going, "Come on, you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. I know you're gonna get to the hook." Listen. Well, man, cause she threw my world. <laughs> At your age and not your shoe size. And in it though. At your age and not your shoe size. And then I'm doing shies. a twirl. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't need to watch Dynasty. Right here on my phone. Oh, she got it. To have an attitude. All right, here she goes. All right. Yeah. I just want you to trust. I just. Uh, hey, you know. You just want Dynasty. No. To have an attitude. You don't have to be rich to be my girl. You don't have to be cool to rule my you don't have to be rich to rule my world. You don't have to be cool to be my girl. Ain't no particular sound that I'm in doubt compatible with. I just want your extra time and your kiss. <laughs> and, and then she did a big finish, yeah. You had a see their fate when you... Oh. Uh. Randy, yes or no? Uh, no, singing's not your thing, baby. Yes. Jewel? No. Nope. Yes. Paula? No, for me. Why'd you keep saying yes? I just like to hear it. You're not going to hear it from us? <laughs> Honestly, sorry. I do apologize. Don't apologize. Don't Thank you. It was like, you know, you're in your car and the battery, you like get the car started, and you're like, all right, cool. And then it... it Dies again, like oh, and it just keeps starting up yeah. and dying, starting up and dying. Jewel seems a little cunty. She doesn't say anything, you know. She was kind of um, yeah. No, she 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 didn't say yeah. much when uh, when she didn't like somebody. She was just kind of like no no, no thanks. Yeah. Sure. She could afford to be cunty. I bet, I, guess. You, I bet you Simon likes to be spanked and strap on fucked. Wow. Because he's so dominant. I'll bet you that he's a little bitch in bed. I bet you he likes to, like, have feet put in his face while he bait. No, they put them in my face. No, and the girls put their feet in his face. Yeah. Make him smell his, their pits. When she was singing, their faces were. If you saw my cousin Vinny, when the stuttering lawyer talked and the jury's faces were just stunned, that's what Simon was sitting there trying going, I can't that. believe this is happening. I was in a right 20 year old movie. I'm trying to think. <laughs> <laughs> and and Rocker Josh, is it worth playing? I don't I don't know. I didn't stay up late enough for Rocker Josh either. He was the we one left that after her. They told him to go sing an Abba song. Yeah, he uh is this worth playing though or he he was this guy this kid Josh. He looked like he should have been in a boy band. He had the look. And when he walked in you could tell like Simon looks at him. Kind of gave him the uh, up and down. I was like, all right, he's got the look that American girls will like vote for. Uh, let's see what he can do. But he's talking about how he's a rocker. And uh, so they were expecting something else to come out of this kid. And his voice is just ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, and he's kind of a one-trick pony thing. So they said, what what's going to happen on week six or something when we do ABBA? He goes, I'll do that and I'll do my own style. So he goes, okay, go out. Get an Abba song together in 15 minutes and then come back and sing it. And right, now it's worth playing because now it's uh, it means something. Yeah. Come in. Right, your name is? Josh. Josh, why are you here? I'm here to be the next American Idol, basically. Um, I don't know. Chris opened some doors last year and I figured I'd just give it a shot. All right, Josh. And when are you going to sing? I'm going to sing uh, Bad Day by Fuel. Okay. Off you go. I had a bad day again. Uh. She said I would not understand She left a note and said I'm sorry I, I've had a bad day again She spilled the coffee, broke her shoelace She smeared the lipstick on her face She slammed the door and said I'm sorry I, 
had a bad day again. Thank you, Josh. Wow. Had a bad audition. Yeah, that that was it. Uh, that was his voice, it, 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 and it was coming out of someone that looked like uh, like uh, our own young Travis holding a cat. He was a very really? young, young, fresh-faced boy. <laughs> smooth as a, what was it today, a hen's egg? A oh, hen's smooth egg. Smooth as a hen's smooth egg. As, a hen's as masculine egg. as a hen. And he's trying to, you know, have this rocker voice and attitude, and it just was, did not look right. It looked like somebody was dubbing his voice. Uh, his rocker voice isn't that good. Yeah. It's, he's got that rasp thing that looks like it'd, he'd blow out his voice in a, a week. And um, they challenged him on it, on the fact that, uh, you know, can you do anything else? You're not that versatile. Okay. And then he started playing other things. And when he did the ABBA thing, they go, I bet everything you sing sounds like that. And he goes, no, you know, do oh. you have that clip? Yeah, we got that ABBA. Okay. But uh, we got to give Voss uh, some credit here. Let's go to Charlie really? in North Carolina. Charlie. Charles. Hey, good morning, guys. How you doing? Hey, good Charlie. Evening. Voss had a great line when the girl Ooh. was screwing up the kiss song that everyone missed. What? He asked how she could snap without any thumbs. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. We, trust me, we heard it. We're like, we, yeah. we, we realized we filled our black quota like hours ago. So exactly. we just, oh. <laughs> no, that was a great line. Thank you, sir. All right. Here's Apple. Okay. <clears throat> so the, the theme is Apple Week. What have you chosen? You can dance. You can shine, having the time of your life. Ooh, see that girl, watch that scene, she is a dancing queen. Okay, so basically every every week we're going to get that voice. No. <laughs> I can do like a Barry Manilow or something if you want. Okay. Yeah? Her name was Lola. She was a showgirl. Uh, oh, I'm getting laughed. No, 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 not Lola. No, because no, I just said, said, I said every are. week we're going to get that with that voice, and you oh, went no, so and you just did it. Well, I'm a little worried that your throat's going to get hurt if you keep yeah. pushing that hard. I've been singing in my band like every day. Oh, so you're in a band? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm in a band. Cool. So years and years and gigs and gigs, and my voice has never gone. And so you write? Do you write? Yeah, I write all cool. I say stick with that. I'm not. Yeah, I would say stick with that with the band, dude. Yeah. I think what we're band. saying is it's a little one-dimensional, this. It is a bit. All right, yes. Randy, Randy, yes or no? I still say no. I think you're better in your band, and I think you're better to be with the band. I don't see you as a solo star like that. It's not yeah, what I, I see. Stay in a rock band. You know, don't be discouraged. Like you're in bands. Yeah. Paula? I'd love to pass. It's a no, but I got to tell you, Josh. In a year's time, you will thank us for not putting you through this round. I exactly. Promise you. I promise you. Why? Oh. Why would they? Got... Why would he thank them? You would get the TV uh, exposure. He, he, would, he would look like a complete ass trying to sing the songs that they make these uh, yeah. other people sing. I wish uh -huh. he could have plugged what garage he's going to be at next week. I know. <laughs> like, no, stick with your band. You know, it's just a bunch of 16-year-olds jamming badly in this, uh, someone's garage. He sounds like a sober Tom Waits. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and here is uh, Josh reacting. I really did think Chris kicked open a door for a lot of people. Apparently not for me. So People always say there's always next year, but nothing about my voice is going to change. I'm not going to change who I am by any means. So. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of crying last You're night. You're a rock oh. band. Tough it up, faggot. I know. Jeez. Jesus Christ. Tough well, it up, kid. What's his guitarist going to say to him? Toughen up. And he gets down to practice. <laughs> right. You would, dude. We got to get a new singer. You were crying on television. Faggot. After singing an ABBA so yeah. song. How much right. fucking rock credibility do we have left? You're out of the band. <laughs> he lost He's getting his, kicked out yeah. of the band. He I lost into her name was Lola. What a girl. <laughs> yeah. You can sing Nirvana, you jerk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Sing something fitting. Yeah. You cuddle of mud? I mean, come on. Cut on national TV. Obviously, you didn't see the Dyson review on Arsenio. It can ruin you. Ooh. Ooh. What? Mm, that was 25 I don't know. I'm ago. trying to get the references. Oh, you know uh, what? I'm yeah. just trying to be uh, a little hip. You're an older gentleman, Rich. Hip. Hip for 1987. I know. You sound like you've just broken one. <laughs> <laughs> Opie and Anthony, this ain't your mama's radio show. Bitch. Do you understand that nobody likes you?
hell is this? What is this? I don't know. What emo? music is this? Is it some emo? A little emo ish. Is it emo? Bill? Uh, Bill? I don't know. It was just in the uh, rejoiners folder. Hello, Bill. And of course, trying to find out who's responsible for putting that in the rejoiners yeah, thing we... would be a, a futile effort. We'll delete that one. Okay. Yeah, how about you just delete that? That's a little faggy for a rejoiner for this program. Yeah. We're rockers, man. We rock. I'll say we do. Right? Paperback writer. Get that in there. Right, Rich? <laughs> I got some best. Why doesn't Lynch go out for Idol? He's got a good voice, right? He's got that good voice. Because he's 45. I was say, he's, yeah, he's an older man. He's an and alcoholic. I, I, believe if, I believe if you've been paid to sing on Broadway, yeah. uh, you're not allowed to, you know, yeah. maybe go in there as an amateur contest. and He would probably do pretty well, I mean, if he was just... Yeah, yeah he's got a great voice. He does. But, uh, yeah, I don't think he'd fit the age requirement anymore. Am I not talking to the mic? Yeah. Yes, sir. People saying you're low today. Am I? I turned you up a, a Low. Bit, so. well, a problem solver's alert about a man wanted for grabbing women's backsides at local stores. The Seminole County Sheriff's Office says several women, in fact, have complained of unwanted touching at the Publix and a Target is... on West Lake Mary Boulevard. As soon as we get our hands on a sketch of the suspect or we get some surveillance video, We'll, of course, show it to you so that you can be forewarned. <laughs> so you can see a man grabbing a woman's yeah, ass. I think it's probably it's, it's Seminal County. Uh, Seminal, <laughs> Seminal Fluid County. <laughs> it happened at Target. Did it? <laughs> Does anybody remember last time? What is that? Oh, exactly. <laughs> Which one does that mean? What? <laughs> Target? That's what uh, happened at Target. Like her ass is the Target? <laughs> I do. Wow. Listen, come on. I've had some great lines today. You make one little dumb line, and you guys will turn it into a documentary. Well, you I'm always surprised there's not a it. fucking Bravo film crew behind me now because of that one line. No, Target. dickhole. <laughs> <laughs> Where is Hakeem? Take me to the Waldorf Astoria. Shut the goddamn man! What? 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 Target? Excuse me, but I do believe that sucked ass. <laughs> Target. Shut up! What? Shut up! Shut up! <laughs> Shut up! Target. I'm gonna kiss you on the mouth. <laughs> All right. Well, I was terrific. <laughs> trying to think of appropriate funny store names. There are none. No. <laughs> no. That's the, the whole line. store thing. As soon as he said, I'm like, all right, store, stores. That might make sense here. Yes. How about Buns and Noble? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he was in Siemens. Go ahead. Uh, Go ahead, Rich. I There's can't. two. You, a, not, a, not, a, not a and you S? Doing. Huh? All right. Uh, <laughs> Are there even ANSs around anymore? Who knows? Rich is going to do one. Go ahead. All right, Rich. Uh, maybe it was our Jiffy Lube. Oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I could do this all day. Uh. Stupid! You're so stupid! Oh, my Jiffy Lube. I hate you. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Uh, someone it, suggesting Starbucks. Uh, <laughs> there you go, Starbucks. Star How about Bunkin Donuts? <laughs> 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 well, it's been a while. And Rears and Roebuck? And go. <laughs> <laughs> and go. <laughs> oh. uh, God damn uh, it. <laughs> what a target. Work off Toys R Us. There might be something there. Oh. Wow. No. That's a tough one. <laughs> well, who was he grabbing? Boys R Us? <laughs> I, got, I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't even worked your way up to nothing yet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like killing clubs. Killing clubs. Uh, no doubt. <laughs> I will yeah. never deny that, by the way. Kill. I don't want to confuse the issue. Rich <laughs> kills in comedy And clubs. I kill on radio, too, yes, in a do. different way. But not the way you would like to kill on the radio. <laughs> no, Our I own listeners are helping out. They oh. are? Home Deep Hole. <laughs> <laughs> Rear One Imports. <laughs> how about, how about Raples? <laughs> 
The lady needed a Bed Bath and Beyond Waka Waka from Chester's Liver or Bed Bath and Behind. Behind, that's the uh, joke. Ah, uh, oh, how about JC Penis? <laughs> Best from butt. Brian from Buffalo. Sam Ass. <laughs> <laughs> how about Dan from uh, Pottstown, Pennsylvania? Askin Robbins. JC Pussies. <laughs> there you go. Just grabbing it from the front? No. Uh, well, let's go to Axe in Maine. Uh, Axe, what's up? Yeah, how about uh, Pimp Crombie and Bitch? And Spit Abercrombie and Fitch? We got oh, it. <laughs> oh, God. Really? We thought it was in... Rich, you're off the hook. We yeah. thought it was instead of TJ Maxx. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of Abercrombie. You know, instead of Abercrombie and Fish, like that was going to make it better. You know, instead of J.C. Crew, what? Oh, I got a little fire on my stove. Let me throw some gas on it. Wow. Uh, <laughs> Dick Sporting Goods. If it's uh, any Dylan? consolation, people are having a hard time coming up with anything uh, funny. I'm, what about I'm... Dwayne Rear from Billy H. and Queens? It's a tough mm, one. Yeah, that's a tough one. All right, well. All right. Let's go to Max in Dallas. Max. Morning, boy. Hi. Hey, Max. How about bed, butt, and beyond? Pushing out. No. Well, no. All right, end of bit. It's not funny anymore. It wasn't even to begin with, to be honest. No. Yeah. Terrible all the way through. Yeah. <laughs> that was five minutes of terribleness. Yeah. If we did it with those three sticks, it would have worked a lot better. If you were juggling... Yeah, like the like finish. the kid on American Idol. Do you know how to juggle? <laughs> Explaining it. Do you know how to juggle? A little, yeah. All right, let's see. What do you got? Give me two checkbooks. Oh, no. <laughs> Jesus, on. what vaudevillian <laughs> steamer trunk did you pull that joke out of? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking A. All right, all right. All right. Uh, to my daughter, wait in this room while I go perform, and I'll be right back. <laughs> it's like a little vaudeville actor brings his... Okay, I'll juggle. Hold on. Oh, my God. <laughs> Do you have grenades, Stan? <laughs> wow. I was just saying to go with those bombs. <laughs> Did I say JC Crew? Oh, boy. Yeah, I'm having a tough time. So I, I heard it. I didn't catch it. Instead of J. Crew. No, I wouldn't have known. Oh, boy. I should have known that one. <laughs> I'm sorry for being an ass. No easy answers tonight for investigators working a deadly plane crash in Van Nuys. The Cessna Citation jet crashed just after takeoff yesterday, killing both pilots. Witnesses say a luggage hatch near the nose of the plane was open on takeoff, but it's unclear if that caused the crash. The plane did not have cockpit, cockpit voice or flight data recorders. Oh, cockpit. Oh. You got to watch the cockpit oh, recorders. Oh, yeah. That could be oh. a problem. All right. Rich no is comment on that one, Rich? I didn't hear. I was yeah. preparing. Oh, ah, that plane crash wasn't Van Nuys. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they could have checked the black box. Oh, she wasn't on the flight. <laughs> yeah, a voice recorder. You know. <laughs> I don't know if this is one on planes. <laughs> Wait, are you talking about the one that crashed in Jersey? Van no. Nuys, New Jersey, yes. Van Nuys, New know. Jersey, yeah. A uh, small plane crash in Jersey, yes, yeah, Rich. Yesterday. Into a house. In the driveway. Into the yeah. driveway. Yeah. One of the dudes that was on the scene. Tragic. Uh, EMT. EMT guy. He goes to the scene of the uh, plane accident and finds out it was his father. His no dad. way. What are the fucking odds of that? Well, 50-50. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. It, it is or it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, why, though? That, so that, this father... He found his father dead in a plane. He's yeah. the, one of the crew that pulled up and, you know, hey, you got a call of a plane crash. They go to the scene. The guy goes to the plane and uh, realizes, holy shit. Yeah, he wasn't going there because he found out his father was in a, in a plane crash. He was just, that's his job. Jesus. Yeah. He was first on the scene and then he finds out that it was his father. <laughs> Sam oh, likes goodness. marshmallows. Isn't that cute? Oh, that's get, adorable. He's got the same skin color. <laughs> <laughs> and you get the same body texture. <laughs> All right, here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sam wants a little sweet treat. Yeah, he's got a sweet oh. tooth. Marshmallow's been in this studio for like two weeks. When he was a boy, I bet if he got A's and B's on his report card, <laughs> he got to take some marshmallows. Now he can have them whenever he pleases here. Look, he stuffs them up in those rosy cheeks like a little That's chipmunk. Right. Have a marshmallow on me.
<laughs> Did you ever toast? Literally. <laughs> he was just sneaking marshmallows. That's a good uh, good call by yeah. someone catching that one. Did mm. you ever toast those over your stove and have, like, the gas taste on them? No. No. Like, I wasn't raised <laughs> on a prairie in 1850. Why would I? <laughs> like, at a camp out with wood, you if know. If you had them at home and you, you wanted to, to roast them at home, you never did over no. your stove? No, because I knew that it would taste like shit. <laughs> Maybe up in your tree house or something? No, nothing like that. <laughs> oh God, that was some great juggling. I, mean, I hope there's hatches. no coffee in that uh, three hatches. <laughs> All right, here you go. There he goes. The great juggling, rich fuck. Oh, <laughs> Anyone can do it that many times. It's not called yeah. juggling. It's called Anyone. throwing the balls up and dropping them. <laughs> Anyone can get all three balls up in the air once. Yeah. That's it. Gets hard after that. All right. Well. All right. He's he's done it a couple of times. There he goes. All right, he's, he's jugging. Now he's juggling. Uh, right. His little hands. Right, sit back down. That's, very good. That's little wonderful. Teeny hands. <laughs> oh, see, when I accomplish something, sit down. No more. But I'm a good oh, juggler. You um, accomplished <laughs> juggling. Yeah, on the radio. <laughs> on the radio. <laughs> well, you know, boy. <laughs> I think it's time for me to leave my seat. I I, I can't compete against that. <laughs> I can't compete against that. Uh, you're right, Red. What am God I, damn. What am I doing here? That does make for some brilliant radio. <laughs> oh, <my God>. Oof. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Poor Rich. He is taking a beating today. Yeah. But you know what? Right from the second you fucking walked in the door with that <laughs> faggot bag. A purse book. <laughs> and, and he brought it in to show it off. There wasn't even anything in the bag. What do you mean? There's a lot of shit in there. My Sony, uh, nice headphones, Comedy Central gave me for Christmas. Is yeah. They're nice. Are they good? Yeah, Are they good. noise uh, canceling? Yeah. You wear them on the plane. Yeah. You should have got bows. And they can plug into. Uh, I, it was a Christmas present. iPod? You got an iPod? Yeah, I got an iPod there too. <laughs> What's on your iPod? How many gigs they give you? 244 songs. Are they any good? Yeah, great stuff. Oh, Panasonic. those are good ones. Panasonic. Yeah. What are the ones you? Jim's got. Uh, oh, those are better. Bose. You only oh, have Bose. Which one? Bose are better. I think so. You only have two hundred and forty. You just. <laughs> There's a lot of great visuals today. You're. Jimmy's really frustrated with his mic. He fixes it and then goes to talk again, and the and whole it mic just goes comes Wah. back down again. Are you gonna? You, I'm not gonna go. break your headphones. Don't. Shut up for a laugh. <laughs> Why else would I do it? <laughs> for tears? <laughs> I want to break the boys up into it. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> what are you looking at? I'm not doing anything, man. I'm just looking at Jimmy with the. It's uh, not always me. Well, it's his That's okay. To 300 bucks for a laugh if it's worth it to you. <laughs> for 300 bucks? <laughs> He's doing the calculations. He, would, he wouldn't pay you back. Huh? He wouldn't oh, it's pay worth that. He, he would have to. These don't, these, uh, <laughs> don't, I don't do it. think, um, they, uh, are they good? Huh? Panasonic. Yeah, how, they can't be 300, I, but what are the bows? They go for a lot, right? 300 something. 300, so those don't go for no 300. You're jacking up the price, <laughs> you Jew. <laughs> it's, it's $300. You, if it's worth the laugh. Let's see what I have on me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hey. That's three hookers. Whoa. Yeah. I'll give you 70. Oh, I got a 1,000 in my pocket. What's that going to do? Kevar 300. These <laughs> 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 fucking guys are a blood to laugh. I can't tell you. <laughs> These fucking guys should be the cat skills together. Oh, he did it. That's fucking funny. The Cumberbund Brothers. God damn, is that fucking funny. <laughs> fucking one <laughs> film. Oh, I should have said that and then broken them. <laughs> you gotta borrow 300. God damn me. That's funny. Oh, that was very funny. Oh, wait. should have broken uh, Let's go to Matt and in Queensbury. God, dude, Matt, Queensbury. <laughs> Queensbury. Hey, By the way, uh, blueberries are making, um, making their way back onto the market. Are they? Slowly but surely, yeah. Ooh. I had my first uh, batch of blueberries <laughs> of the oh. new year. How were they? Pretty good. But they need to like uh, ripen a little the bit blueberries. more. Blueberries. Blueberries. Uh, Matt from Queensbury. Matt? Yeah, guys. Uh, Rich is lying there. Give me two checkbooks to show, you know, juggling there. I think that's the horniest joke I've ever heard come out of my talking sound box. Yeah, oh, okay. juggle the books. I get it. <laughs> right. All right. 
Findings are being reported by the Times of India in an article called Indian Men Don't Measure Up. Poor fit contributes to a higher failure rate, which experts say is a major problem in India. The number of HIV infu- infections has been skyrocketing <laughs> oh. there. The government study measured 1,400 men and found most... Are they, were they talking about their dicks don't fit in the fucking condoms or something? Like, the story alone is pretty... Pretty hot. Is that what it, They don't measure up. And they're cu- they're falling out of their condoms. Is that what he And said? getting AIDS or something? Jesus. There's some type of they infection. They got big cocks. <clears throat> oh, it- or small cocks. Oh, they got small cocks. I couldn't tell. Why are you Indian? Never seen an Indian How man. How do you know cock. all about this? Look at those lips. What? When you're sucking on, what? Wait. Oh, oh, this kid uh, sucks on cocks. Come on in. <laughs> Who are you, sir? Uh, my name is Franco from Oceanside. Franco from Oceanside. So how do you know about Indian cocks? Uh, the article was on whackbag.com. Oh, it was? Oh, yes. Okay, of course it was. Cool. Thank Your you Indian know. cock website. Yes. <laughs> Your Indian cock connection. <laughs> and uh, it's that Indian man's cocks, too small? Yeah, they don't they don't fit in even regular size condoms. Regular size condoms, so they should <laughs> fucking... St- holy shit. Rotten little dicks falling <laughs> out. <laughs> Dibber, dabber, dibber. <laughs> oh, that is the worst. You know, that's worse. a bad rep. Don't they have. have extra skin to begin with, so they got more to stuff in there? Or what? Foreskin? I don't know. I've never seen an Indian no? man's cock. Anyone? Oh, where's Steve? Well, the, it depends on where they're from. <laughs> it depends on the region, what part of the country. Yes. If you're speaking a different dialect, yes, the Hindus are, are, are thicker endowed. Steve, there he is. Steve, you know anything about Indian, Indian men's cocks? Do they have foreskin? Uh, I went to boarding school with an Indian guy once. Oh, oh. And, yeah, a lot of foreskin on the Indian. Oh, because the, uh, their their religion, Buddhism, doesn't uh, uh, ha- have circumcision in it as some kind of... Uh, is that what it is? I don't know. I just remember this kid had a lot I'm of foreskin babbling in front of a microphone. Penis? No. Kind of average, but it's just a lot Did of... you ever grab it and twist his foreskin and snap it up like a window shade and laugh and lick it? I mean, I'm just asking. <laughs> it was very tempting to do a few times. Because the story itself... Well, I thought it was the story, and yeah. then I realized it was that he, it was a blooper, and the guy said infuction. Infuction, right. Which was always a favorite as a kid. Right. I can't hear you. I have an infuction in my ear. We were watching porn the other night, and, you know, the size of the cocks and this and that, and Ooh. this guy comes out with a cock. And, comes and out bon- with a cock. And Bonnie goes, look how small that is, and it was fucking way bigger than mine. I'm going, why would you say that? Yeah. You know, I don't mind if she says, well, you're not in porno. It's a, it doesn't. It doesn't matter if she says it to a porno movie. It's like look how small that guy is to a porn movie. It's oh. like if you're driving and you know you're watching a NASCAR thing. He goes, look how fast he's driving. It's NASCAR. It doesn't mean you're driving slow. To oh. put it in terms you can understand. Thank you. Yeah. Here's Always the story. here to help. Measuring up. Sorry, folks. We don't know how to quite tell you this, but a two-year study by the Indian Council of Medical Research has conclusively established that the penises of Indian men are smaller, one to two inches smaller wow. in point of fact. That is small considering the average penis lays somewhere between five and a half and six inches. No, between three and a half and four and a half. Is that what if you tell Bonnie? If it's under ice. <laughs> yeah. That's what he tells Bonnie. Right. Oh. Look, it's average. Yeah. Uh, average. So they're talking, um, wow, that's a small dick, you Indians. No one is so crotchety. <laughs> Calibrated penises of the 1,200 volunteers across the country uh, down to the last millimeter concluded that Indian men came up short of the international standard. Oh. How did the uh, Chinese fit into this? Because that's always the stereotype there. Why uh, is the council peeking into your pants, you ask? Well, their concern is condoms, a fifth of which fall off or tear during use by Indian men because they're too large. The condom, that is. The international condom standard are not appropriate for Indians. So the ICMR is calling for mixed size condoms, euphemism for smaller, mixed size. The council fears that people would be too embarrassed to ask the pharmacist for a smaller condom, of course. Minis. Say, can I have the Indian mini? <laughs> Sunil Mahra, former editor of Maxim India, is unfazed by Indians failing the international yardstick by uh, telling the BBC it's not size, it's what you do with it that matters. And apparently you get AIDS with yours. (laughs) (laughs) 
Uh, from our population, the evidence as is Indians are doing pretty well. It doesn't matter if you could fucking shoot a load. You could shoot a load with a fucking half-inch penis and get a woman pregnant, you dope. With apologies to the poet Alexander Pope, you could say, Four inches and centimeters, let fools contend. I like when a little culture is thrown into a dick story. All right. How great is that? That Indians have small cocks? Fantastic. <laughs> has Bullen made his first TV appearance since the fighting started, and he vowed to beat back any ground invasion Israel may be considering. He's also condemned Israel's bomb attacks on lesbians. Excuse me, Lebanon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those dykes. Uh, lesbians. Good old lesbians. That's good. They slip up. What are you? What are you gonna do? They're human. Right. I saw a shame, shame, shame. Yeah. Promo last night. Are we still at? Uh, yeah, we're shame, shame, shaming those? still. Shame, shame, shaming. Yeah, definitely. Also, I think it was A and E is playing. Um, yeah. Yeah. What? It's, uh, David Caruso, CSI Miami. Because now. I have to catch the beginning every single night. Last night I was pissed because it was the one that was in one of the montages. No? no we Open the door so we can hear it. <laughs> no, of course. I wouldn't expect you to. Only a blithering, blathering idiot should Say do that. Uh, it's one of the montage uh, pieces Eric. that was on the video. Your catchphrase. There was one of them. Montage. There we go. <laughs> Thanks. When he does that... I want to take these alligator teeth I'm holding and <laughs> smack his face. <laughs> it, yeah, just slap him. It goes through me because his lips go like man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah kind it's of on loud. face. He's really into it's it. It's on a face. But uh, yeah, it was one that was in that whole uh, group of clips. So I was pissed. It was one where the, his friend gets blown up with a hand grenade and he puts the sad little face on, mm -hmm. and then they go into yeah. Do I don't want that. I want do, the, the uh, bad acting. Do you take CSI over Law and Order? No, I take it as a complete goof because David Caruso is the worst actor delivering the worst lines ever written in, in uh, with the it, worst direction I've ever seen. It's so horrific to watch. Isn't it like one of the top shows on TV? Or exactly. Something? I don't know You like David how. Caruso's acting? No, I don't watch the show. I've never really watched it. I watch Law and Order. I mean, he he's he doesn't he's the same emotion every time you see him. Finally, exactly. uh, Brad and Angie. The last story of the day. Brangelina is now calling the Big Easy home. We have to save Brad Pitt. What? Brad Pitt. At this point, we got to go save Brad Pitt. We're to New Orleans. How we could a guy to save Brad Pitt that could call fuck out the anyone National Guard? Be so pussy whipped. This guy is pussy whipped. Why are they moving to New Orleans? Well, Brad and Man. Angelina have moved with their three children to flood-ravaged New Orleans, where they are living in a mansion. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Why don't you go all the way if you're going down there? Yeah. Uh, living in a mansion in the city's historic French Quarter and plan to send their kids to a local school, it was reported yesterday. There's no way this is true. Black kids, though, they got, right? How many? They got a mix. No, they got a uh, Ching Two? Chong and one Ching Chong... <laughs> One, ooh, one, one <laughs> Negro. Right. One that can't fit a rubber. And 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 I think one waterhead because we I haven't seen the baby right. really. I think they're hiding the other one. Oh, one that is a uh, natural. Yeah, they did a natural, but yeah. you don't see that one. You, you wow. see uh, the Ching Chong and the Negro. That's great. Which is the oldest? Uh, the Ching Chong. Is the is the natural one the youngest? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The baby. We love it there, uh, Angelina said. Why? The couple, known for their humanitarian efforts, reportedly picked the city partly to draw attention to its plight. I think we all know what happened. Is there any... Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie moving to New Orleans is going to enlighten everybody as to what happened there? Pompous. Yeah, that is so fucking... Look how important we are. One source suggested that the paparazzi plagued Angelina also may be interested in finding some uh, refuge from the cameras. Oh. Oops. Yeah, the paparazzi aren't going to follow you down there. That, Of course not. Uh, Angelina is interested in befriending normal moms so she can do things with the kids. Good luck. Did you see the fucking footage out of New Orleans? Normal moms? Stop it. What is she? What are they thinking? She's insane. I know well, that. Well, you know what, but though? I thought he like my. Well, what wasn't it, look? She's crazy. She's already gone. She's always been like that. Yeah. Always. But it's Brad Pitt. What is he doing at this point? He must be a great fuck. 
So I, was thinking, I guess ah, that gets boring after a while. Billy, what? What? It I was going to say Billy Bob a, a is lucky. Fuck? No, a guy like him could fuck anything. So he, you know, he's getting bored of her. What? You can't even get bored. Boy, but he's pulling all the moves of of somebody that's he's, not bored. He's pulling all the he's moves of the someone moves that of, is very pussy with. Of week one fucking. That's what he's doing. Moved to New Orleans. Yeah. French. Quarter. He doesn't want to go there. He's too scared to speak up at this point. Been there, that place stinks. He probably beats him up behind closed doors. Oh, yeah. Push things in his backside. I see him cowering. Makes it him says, watch his own movies. It says if you don't go to New Orleans, uh, I'm gonna release this tape. What <laughs> tape? What you think there's a? No, I'm just saying. I was going oh. off Jimmy's. Thing I heard there the, was actually. Oh, oh, oh. With the thing up his butt. I was just going with Jimmy's oh, okay. line there, and I was the strap I, on. I was working a little bit. So Brad Pitt takes it up the ass with a strap on. That's from what the rumor Angelina. has been. Oh, okay. But not from her. From actually a third party. Oh. While she watches and eats like little bonbons and chocolates. <laughs> <laughs> Feeds them to the children. All right. <laughs> oh man. <yeah. laughs> little callback. Sorry. Yeah. It's time to uh, wrap up this show. Yeah. Rich, it was a pleasure. I had a good time. Rich, always you. fun. What are we plugging? Hammering you. Uh, oh, uh, Saturday night we're doing a show, Bonnie and I here, and then uh, The Palms on the 10th, and also vote at Comedy Central. Right. Uh, Comedy hey, Rich, what do you know about BowdogFight.com? Uh, I know if... Uh, uh, it's got to be good if you're going to talk about it. I know one wow. thing. Wow. What do you think BowdogFight.com is about? Uh, it's probably like the pit bull fights and the dog fights. <laughs> bow dog? It's dog fights. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. A, a sport that isn't legal <laughs> anywhere even near it's the fucking on civilized our, world. It's sponsoring on our show. Dog fighting. Dog right. fighting. Oh, chicken dog. fighting and cock fights. Cock fights yeah. and pit bulls. That's fantastic. Dog fighting. All right. How about we give you another chance? Okay. Bowdogfight.com. Bowdog. The, uh, some kind of like, you know, full contact... Uh, fighting. Uh, it's a, it's oh, a, okay. You know, full contact well, fighting site. Okay. Well, okay. Dog. For what? Very good. For full contact fighting. People. Yeah. yeah for people. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Well, snack motors are sloppy. It doesn't make sense if you're dealing with an amateur. But we are looking for pro. That's the go. David Caruso there delivery. Today's CSI, the line but of the day. are looking for a pro. What a tool he is. He is the worst horrible actor. We got to mop up a little bit. Matt on Long Island. Matt? Yeah, I wanted to tell you, you're wrong about that baby. It's like a super baby. It has the qualities of both of them. Okay, I, was, uh, I don't think I've seen a picture of it yet. That's all. It's in. The, it was in the Daily News like two weeks ago. It had. It had her eyes and like his face. It was. It's gonna take over the world. Oh, it's gonna take on the world. All right. I'm sorry. I guess it's not a waterhead then. In New Orleans. Thank you, Matt. No problem. Dogfight.com sponsors line of the day. Here is the runner-up line of the day. Stereotypical white guy. I wonder why you shave like why that. Why do you shave like that? With a gun to my back. <laughs> that white woman. <laughs> yes. Holding the razor with your foot. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> Jimmy's crazy. Rich got all happy. He thought it was him for a second. He got all excited. And then I realized it was just the setup. For Jimmy's line. That was just a bounce pass. Yeah. He gave Jimmy the assist. bounce pass. It was an assist. Yeah, it was an assist. Yeah, it was an All right. And finally, here is uh, today's line of the day. Thanks to BowdogFight.com. <laughs> it's three hundred dollars. If it's worth the laugh, too much to have on me. <laughs> <laughs> oh hey, that's three hookers. Whoa, oh. I give you seventy. Oh. <laughs> I got a thousand in my pocket. What's that gonna do? Kevin, three hundred. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it is. Yeah. The end. Jimmy oh, Norton. Wow. Of the day. God, that was funny. Uh, perfect Zane. setup. That was like the perfect play. It's great. Uh, I would have been built. better if I would have broken it. Oh. I should have broken it. No, no, no. Of course you should have broken it. That was perfect because he was, he was expecting it. 
And if you, you turn that around nicely, I thought. Yeah, and because sometimes you're in, you're you're put in a position in the studio like, oh, everyone expects you to break it now. It's like, ugh. you want it to be unexpected. Plus, I, I like the bows anyhow. Hey, uh, Jimmy, you need help with Zanies? You all right? Let's hope so. I, I leave tomorrow afternoon. I hope so. Let's hope you need help. No, that people are. Going. Oh, okay. Three different Zanies in I Chicago. I hope the places are all empty and no one shows. Yes. Three different Zanies in Chicago this weekend. Downtown uh, tomorrow night, and then Friday is uh, either St. Charles or, or Mount Vernon, or wait, Vernon Hills or St. Charles, and then Saturday is either oh. St. Charles or Vernon Hills. Oh, oh, <laughs> no. oh no! Oh no! I'm in I'm in downtown Chicago, Vernon Hills, St. Charles. One each night, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And Friday, wow. you're going to be on Steve Dahl's show? I believe so, yes. Yeah, check out Jimmy on Steve Dahl's show on WCKG if you're in the Chicago area. Yeah. All right, oh. Rich, thanks. Thanks, man. Any last right. words? No, man, I'll see you guys Saturday. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Not you guys, the people that will be listening. Yeah. You know. What? Listeners. The hell, we always have good shows, Bonnie and I. Oh. Looking forward to it. Oh, boy. No, you do. You do good. No, Mitch. You got, you got good reviews for your uh, Saturday night show. Absolutely. Thank you. All right.